In a galaxy far, far away, where the forces of light and darkness clash amidst the stars, a timeless saga unfolds. Behold the epic struggle between the noble Jedi Knights, guardians of peace and justice, and the sinister Sith Lords, masters of the dark side. Meet Luke Skywalker, a young farm boy destined for greatness. Princess Leia, a fearless leader of the Rebel Alliance. Han Solo, the charming rogue with a hairy sidekick. And Darth Vader, the Dark Lord of the Sith. From the desolate sands of Tatooine to the bustling streets of Coruscant, from the frozen wastelands of Hoth to the lush forests of Endor, their adventures span the galaxy. But as the Rebel Alliance fights to free the galaxy from tyranny, they must face the might of the Empire and its fearsome army of stormtroopers. Yet amidst the turmoil, hope flickers like a distant star, as alliances are forged, friendships tested, and the fate of the galaxy hangs in the balance. Get ready for a journey beyond imagination, where heroes rise, villains fall, and destinies are forged among the stars. Star Wars, a saga of epic proportions that will captivate audiences for generations to come. May the Force be with you. Hello and welcome to the chat. My name is DJ Danger VV on the Zoom Zooms. Join me up to my, I guess it'd be to my what? virtual, my virtual right. Shut up, Amanda. My gosh. <laughs> my gosh. To my virtual right, we have the man, the myth, the legend, the other furious V, Stippling Vaughn. And then below me, we have Amanda. Who tries to keep this ship in tip-top shape? We just, we just kind of don't like it when she, when she does it. She'll be like, "Didn't you forget to do something, Vanessa?" I'm like, "Shit!" You don't have to remind me. But Amanda, it's good that Amanda is here. It really is. How you guys doing this weekend? Good. Good. Got the weekend off from house hunting, so. Oh, nice. So. Amanda made. A delicious looking dessert chat. No, I didn't make it. Who Who's made it? it? My daughter, all by herself. Oh, that's Ooh. even better. Yeah, yeah. My okay, eleven I need... year old knows how to cook. At least she knows how to follow directions. Oh, that's good. I need to show the chat this. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm. Oh, I should have. Wait, let me send a better picture. Oh, Are you sharing she... the picture? She's like, let me go share a better picture it's chat. A better the, picture. The, the picture that we got was quite fine. So yeah. this this is what this is what the child made the child that we're gonna send into the wilderness with no internet for a week because of your support of them cookies. This is what what she made. It's diabetes in in a pan, but <laughs> it is. That's fast tracking diabetes. This yeah. is this is early onset. <laughs> Early onset diabetes. <laughs> we had a bag of leftover, like Easter chocolate. Like I don't know what was in it. Twix, Milky Ways, Three Musketeers, blah blah. She's like, "Can I add all these?" I'm like, "How much is left?" Because I haven't seen the bag in probably a week, and she's been home on on school break. So she shows me. I'm like, "Yeah, that's probably a little too much to add to it." And then she's like, "Can I do a handful?" I'm like, "Yeah, I guess so." <laughs> Does she have like the biggest freaking hands? Uh, uh, 11 year old well these yeah, are little she... mini I don't even remember what they were three musketeers or something like that they're mini there's only five of them on there she put 
put them in the corners and one in the middle. And then she did uh, chocolate chips. Do these oh, automatically yeah. come with a, a with a met with a thousand milligram bill metformin? Yes. Okay. For real. Then, <laughs> okay, all those with diabetes or pre-diabetes. Hold on, we, we, we have... <laughs> you see his trap go. <laughs> I, I, I... Trav go says, did we learn nothing about juvenile diabetes last episode? We learned that it's a very important issue and we should talk about it. Oh, That's yeah. what we learned last week. So, see, see, Amanda's daughter is providing us with an educational opening to talk about diabetes. <laughs> Yes. You're going to share the other picture. I think it's a better picture. Okay. A more, not just like straight chocolate, because all you see there is frosting and chocolate chips. And okay. I think they're Milky so, Ways. I didn't actually have one of them. So this is when when it's cut. Yes. This is, this is the will. piece I had. Oh. Oh. You actually did a really good job cooking it. It looks moist in, yep. in a good way. Yes. yes. It was pretty good. Look, look at Amanda raising her daughter, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So Stippling got a break break from house hunting. Amanda has her daughter slaving away in the kitchen. Yep. I'm dealing with freaking bullshit government stuff at the job, but that's fine. I'll survive. But now we have to catch up with the chat. So awesome one. First, I need to again apologize to the vampire crew. Vampire crew, I'm be I'm be keeping 100. I had no idea what we we're gonna talk about until this morning, and I was like, eh, some of the stuff. I mean, there's nothing that is like fiery in our topics. I just kind of didn't want to talk about them, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It's the stuff that happened in this last week. So there it is. There it is. Vampire crew. I didn't know what we were going to talk about, so that's why the stream didn't get set up. Also, if you've been looking, um, seeing the new, um, the new, my new lazy uh, thumbnail for <laughs> for the show. So for the ones who stream, StreamYards now has AI to help you make a thumbnail. So that's what that is. Because this is a hobby, guys. Like, I'm not trying to make money off this shit. So we're going to, this is the most low effort <laughs> that I could do. I'm not even opening up PowerPoint anymore. It's just, oh, it's built into the program. Let me go make, make a uh, thumbnail real quick. Do you think that's what uh, Ethan does for Traskast with all those like frog and farming and whatever subjects he tends to use? Oh, I'm um, sure. That, I don't mean, how, how he did all that. Like if somebody was providing him with all that or. How that worked? Yeah, I have no idea how he makes his thumbnails. Probably more sophistic in a more sophisticated way than I make my thumbnails, but. Oh, but we're not we're not ready to talk about him yet. Now let's go talk to the chat. So awesome one was the first one to say sandwich, and then I was like, "You're so quick with it," because I literally just put the the thing up when he put sandwich. Maromi was here earlier. Prater Seven is hopefully still here. And he says, let's argue, not. We're, we're going to argue. We're going to, me me and Vaughn are going to start yelling at each other. It'll be two furious Vs, like yin yang, just yelling at each other. And Amanda's going to be like, guys, guys, stop it. Stop. Or no, she's I'm just going to, I'm going to rage quit. Yeah, she's going <laughs> to she's gonna be like the bird. I'm out of here. I'm taking a hiatus. Um, Angela Curry is up in this here house. Maromi says, next hiatus is Memorial Day weekend. Any predictions? Uh, well, the good news is next week is not hiatus. So if anybody's like, oh, Danger Vanessa, she hates Comics Gate, blah, blah, blah. If I hated Comics Gate, I would go on hiatus. And next weekend during C2E2 and just, and just let the spirits decide on its own. Just you know, unleash unleash that demon called the chat hiatus. Is upon that supposed that weekend. to be next weekend? C two E two. Yes, okay. next weekend. So we will have a show chat. So whatever nonsense happens, it's not my fault. All right. So Jolly Green is here. He says Vampire Crew. 
I, he says, I don't think CG makes it to Memorial Day. Dang. <laughs> the it only will. thing. It will. I have faith. And then he says, the only thing that could withstand the CG atomic bomb radiation is the chat. Well, I mean, and not just the chat, the show. It's the chat. Like, at the end of the day, these creators yeah. always forget that we need each other. They cannot make money if there's no customers or the chat, if the chat doesn't exist. And then the chat doesn't have anything to talk about if CG doesn't exist. So we're in a parasitic mutual <laughs> relationship. feel like we're just sucking on each other's blood. Hey, Vanessa can only go so far talking about watches. I mean, she tried her damn just last week. No, you guys, I didn't even talk about watches at all. Everybody was just like, no. <laughs> Bro, I, I think some... it was mentioned. We we snubbed that yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, you're like, no. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and a big watch event happened. Like people released their watches for the for the new year for 2024. Mm-hmm. I had to talk about that. Well, besides the fact that I, I like one of the Rolexes that came out, but I don't have twenty eight thousand. All right, all right, move along, move along. We're going. Oh, uh, look at her. She's like the chat's <laughs> about the rebel. How dare you? Hey, how hey, dare hey, you, Amanda? Hey, Amanda, Vanessa tried her best to steer in the watch gate, but the chat wanted it, and they got the furious V of furious Vs, and. It's oh, wait, 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 wait. I got the show notes. Watches were not on the show notes. No watches. She oh, you actually read it? I do read the show notes. She tried her best, but dear Lord, did she... I mean, it's... You know when they show that... Was it live or Memorax? And you show, see the person's face and it's peeled back? That was every single person in the chat. Because they were like... Because V went hard last week. Oh, you're talking about that. Yeah. I think the only one who want who wants watch gate is Jasper Plan He's the only he's the only other person who's like, yeah, watches. <laughs> uh Brighter Seven says nuclear winner. We have a fill with two L's. Oh shit, I didn't put the bingo card. We're, we're gonna have to call it Audible on the bingo card. Mm-hmm. Uh let's see here. You want me to pull Let, that up? Um, I have it. But yeah, pull that up. We'll, we'll I'll work it into the, the odds and ends things. Uh, Likovich says, just had a torta Spanish sandwich Saturday. Well, I mean, put it put it up on X. Going to give it to you. Mm-hmm. Halder was here. Mo Biggs was here for a moment. He says, I can't make it today, but have a good show. Oh, mm-hmm. thank you, Mo Biggs. M- uh, Maromi. Hail. Yep. Hail to the Biggs. Uh, Maromi, he knew, he knew what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. With, with the sh- uh, show title. Uh, Citizen One is here. Okay, I need to speed it up. Everybody's like, Vanessa, you take too long doing this. I have to say hello to you. Uh, Snugless is here. Dojo Kuhn says Matt Barr was being salty. Uh, a salty little bish on Twitter. It's funny as hell. He's a bully on the play- playground of life. The playground of life. All right. So let's see here. Where is Dojo was like, look at that crowd. So this was going. <laughs> so that chick had a piano. That meow. Wasn't an adult piano? Because it looked kiddish. No, it was a kid piano. They somehow, some way connected it to the PA system. But it's a it was a piano that meowed. And I don't know if you guys saw the kid who was in, I think that was a Chewbacca cosplay. But that little kid, so he was he was the kid in his mom's lap who was right next to the guy with the Wonder Bread uh, t-shirt. That yeah. little kid was jamming during the whole song. And I was like... The one with the ears? He, he was, yeah, no, he was throwing up the devil horns and freaking rocking out. There. Yeah, it was, it was in there. I promise you. I'm not going to play it again. And then during the song, Sister Rona says, you're right, V, they're pretty good and fun. Yeah, it was... Mm-hmm. It was a fun little band. Lord Nemesis says, I'm the weirdo with the green hair. Lord Nemesis, you're really a woman? I was thinking it was someone dressed up like the Grinch because I didn't see the lady's face. I'm like, is that a person that's like cosplaying as the Grinch? No, she just had she was hair. Color hair. It was someone from yes. Whoville that was dressed up like the Grinch. Maybe that's maybe that's it. So Prater Seven says, What what is this? So it was a band doing 
covers of anime songs. Obviously, they worked in other things. Uh, but that was at my local Comic Con that happened a couple weeks ago. It was a fun time for what it was. Let's see who else is in here. Everybody's saying hello. So during the 50 Star Wars, Cicerona says, now I need this movie. Well, I mean, AI can make it happen. Yep. Moromi says, have you seen the West Al- uh, Anderson trailers? I may have to look mm-hmm. that up. Yeah. May have to look that up. Phillip's back. He says, hey, my peeps. His peeps. A-Line is in the house hailing everybody and hail to you back, sir. Let's see here. Ooh, Phil's supposed anybody? to be fulfilling soon. Ooh, I like it when Phil fulfills. Shut up, chat. Behave. Eric DeGuapo says hello to a bunch of people. He doesn't say hello to me, though. Eric. Eric. Richie Dupe says, hail Vanessa, Amanda, and Vaughn. Well, hail to you. He forgot banana. Oh, I guess, and bananas for all. We just, we're just assuming. Is that that his next line? Probably. Uh, I do see some will come through Lord Nam. Dang. We're going to eventually get to that. Richie Dupes says, who needs feet and eyes in a nervous system anyway? Eh, you know, you don't, you don't know. And Philip says he's packing trading cards. We love to hear about it. We love to see it. See here. Travco also says, not going to not gonna lie, I'll eat the fuck out of that and wash it down with 25 units of that uh, Novalin. <laughs> what? Of that Novalin 70 by 30 F, uh, LFG. I'm assuming no, either he knows what he's talking about or he just sounds convincing and plays one on TV. Yes, <laughs> plays doctor on TV. Ellie Iris Richroch. <laughs> Oh, there's a chat hatch show tonight. Yes. Why Iris Rich Watch? Did did you go? Did you go to the watch, watch YouTube, and find it? Ellie says NASCAR was neat. Mm-hmm. We're gonna talk about that. I I just read your whole name, Lord Nemesis. So Lord Nemesis sexually violated Frog Tony. <laughs> and the thing is, there's a comma. So it's not Lord Nemesis sexually violated Frog Tony. It's mm-hmm. Lord Nemesis, comma, sexually violated Frog Tony. So I, I don't know how to take that, Lord Nemesis. And he says, it, uh, it is what it is. What, uh, what it is, it is. I know, I sound like a child. Uh, Carbon Heart says, "What's up, everybody?" And then everybody said, "Hello." Oh, Sister C- Rose said, "Fed using AI." You know, I I have a job with high job security, uh, and people are like, "But I, but AI though." I was like, "Listen, AI is not smart enough to do our fucking job. Our job is too fucking complicated for this shit." And, and I know because they're actually trying to do AI at my job, and it is fucking everything up. I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, stop it, stop it with this shit. I understand some government appointee had to go try to make his fucking his or her fucking mark, but god damn it, <laughs> I'm gonna be here when your president is gone, and I have to deal with this fucking shit. <laughs> yep. I'm so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, chat. You don't want to hear about my job. My job is boring. Uh, Jolly Grease says I'm on Vaughn's team. Dang, they're they're doing they're doing teams. I I'll be honest with you, Jolly. Uh, What's I the opposite option? I, yeah, thank you. But I'll tell you something. I'm up, I'm up against stiff competition with Furious. So, uh, Jolly Green, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. If this was actually a physical fight, I'm sure for one of us is racing to the gun. But like, if it's a fist fight, I'm not dumb. Oh. I, I am. I'm a five foot three woman in a in a not five three woman world. You're a five I'm, three foot woman that was in the Marines. Guess what? I'm, listen, Trump, I'm old. That's we running. My height. <laughs> I'm running. Listen, you, I'm old. I'm running. Bullshit. I'm running. I'm, I'm ready for the fucking enough, car. Listen, I I, <laughs> I always plan to do this, 
And I'm I'm sure it's not going to work. Deep in my heart, I know it's not going to work. But my plan was always to fucking cry and, like, throw my voice a little higher and be like, oh, my God, I just buy my business and this guy just hit me. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work, honestly. No. no. Like I but said- that, is, that is the play. That's that is the play. Uh, we have a young talking and drawing with Shane Davis saying hello to the chat. Prater Seven automatically just put blood taters. You're not supposed to put gang language in this chat. I'm a fed. How am I supposed to explain this to my boss? We got blood taters. Everybody saying hello to Shane. How am I supposed to explain this? It is what it is. What it is. And, and what it is, it is. It is. It is. Uh, Travco says, I heard two viewers' fees was a fantasy dream of many young men. Dang. Oof. I don't know about all that. Uh, Tree Goblin says, oi, oi. And then uh, Dojo Kud says, mutual enablers. Hopefully we're talking about diabetes at that point. Uh, Sister Ronin no, says, please God, no watches. <laughs> what? Sister Ronin, what is wrong <laughs> What is wrong with my little escape from Comics Gate to be like, I'm going to watch about watches? Well, plus also, Citizen Ronin, what's the first part of your name? The name of a watch. Damn! And a Japanese watch at that. A Japanese. The, the, and, and your last name is Ronin. Citizen Ronin. Lonin. Because they, they don't have R's or L's in Japanese. So sometimes the L is an R, and sometimes so sometimes somebody is instead of Lillian, they're Rubrian. Here we go. Eric DeGuapo says, "I'm not surprised CG doesn't like watches with how many late campaigns there are." Damn. Ooh. Maybe maybe chat. Maybe you're on to something. Maybe we shouldn't talk about watches or timepieces in in a comic skate show. That's maybe you're fun. right. Well, one thing's for sure. There's no such thing as a stopwatch in in Comics Gate. Dang. I think the stopwatch would break before some of these campaigns would fulfill. Oof. Hey, we've seen some books in people's mailboxes this past week. Yeah, my, my Comics Gate has oh, yeah. been serviced. Johnny Ohm is here, and he says, word up, y'all. Word up. Word up to your mama, to your daddy. Sister Rose says, no, I thought it was a guy, the green hair. No, that was definitely a chick. Apparently, she has a degree in in music, which is like, you better get a teaching cert after that. Mugen One is in this here chat. It's always good to have Mugen One in this uh, this place. Uh, Carbon Heart says, quite a potty mouth, Vanessa. I wish I could do a British accent so I could be like, just start saying cunt. Yeah, I, I like saying cut. I've 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 discovered this word, this undiscovered and th- like the biggest no no word for Americans. I discovered this country and I kind of like it. I wish I I visited more when I was younger. Because like there's a after a while you're like, bitch asshole, you know, whatever. You 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 sleep with your mom, but there's something about just being able to throw out cunt. Like you're a cunt. I gotta stop using that word. <laughs> uh, Baz says, yo, yo. Hey, what's up, Baz? All right, let me see if anybody else slid in. Uh, Sister Rose says, V is a honey badger. Because what? Honey badger don't give a fuck. Uh, Snuggy says he puts $20 on oh, Wait, it. Should we play? Be, should we be playing drinking games with all the cuss words you're saying tonight? Oh, dear Lord. Please no. don't. Don't, no, have don't do it. Claws. Okay. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Uh Ro he says Roche, Roche, Rouge. Yeah, it's not Rouge. That's isn't that French? R O U G E. Isn't that Rouge for red? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh Richie Dupe says the Chinese used to call me Lynchy, and it didn't matter which dialogue they spoke. Shane <laughs> mm. Davis says, Am I allowed here? Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, the, 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 we welcome everybody. We welcome the weebs. Mm-hmm. We welcome. Who else do we welcome? 
She'll, we, even, she'll even sing for you without taking super chat money. Yeah. I'll, oh, I'll, did you get that song going? Shit. Which one was it? Damn it. Didn't do it? Vanessa forgot her homework. Shut <laughs> up. <sighs> All right, moving on. Because I could pull up the lyrics, but I totally forgot the melody. I, I do owe oh. this. It's uh, snuggly, uh, uh, it's snuggly uh, uh, getting me out at my ass on the chat. Not no. yet. <laughs> Alter, <laughs> Alter, Alter the song. It's the dingling song. Yes. Am I, am yes. I really? I mean, there's next week. Yeah, you're being very naughty, naughty tonight, Vanessa. Careful now. What? Get some, get some oil. Uh, Vanessa, you need to say "cut" with an uh, Aussie accent, else it doesn't hit hard enough. So, like, how does trying to dollar dues, dollar dues go, Bogan? It is is how how does the, the Aussies do the U? Because like, I know I know choke out with his English accent. He's like quunt, you're quunt. Bancroft hasn't shown up yet to tell us, so we're off to. What well, can we put that? One hey, but a, but the thing is, a line. He's Australian. Oh. So yeah, how yeah. how do you do the how do you pronounce the U's? Yeah. There. Uh, is there any new wire uh, new wire tapping? Hopefully, no one's tapping on my wires. Travco says, "Damn, I came here for Vanessa's dangling fine." Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Jim Hawaii is here. I don't know if this is your first time or not, but welcome to the chat. Let's see here. Uh talking drawing. There's uh so to Shane. There's no escaping you, homo. Don't block me, Amanda. Why is I'm watching. Why why Got my eyes coming? on you? I mean, she does have the power. Like she is she is the most powerful mod of my mods. I thought you could. You thought you could. Re Wait, what type of fucking shit we got going here, Jimmy Hawaii? You thought you could escape your responsibility, Shane Davis Art. So Fool. far, I'm taking it as teasing, but don't forget to be uh, mildly respectful. Yeah, fool. You should put you fool. Then I would have been like you fool. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you gonna do a Mr. T impersonation? No, it is fool. Trying to just do villainy. And then he put stat. Jim, oh, what, did, what does stat O have to do with, with you threatening? Smartest stat don't show up this week. Oh my goodness! You're gonna call call the bird into here. Um, and he says, "Ha, huh. I've got I've I've got a I've got a feather to pick with that bird if he shows up." I need to get my I need to get I need to get all my bird videos for when he's off his hiatus. Mm -hmm. When he's off his little hibernation, Richie Dupe says, "I replaced all my wires with sausages." There you go. Look, Snuggy's like, "Let's hear it, me." <clears throat> oh my god! I thought Snuggy was the most powerful. I I guess he is. And then he was like, "Wood wooden shot." Oh, okay. The uh... owl. The owl watches owl. I would like to know You're what he shot. does. I actually yeah. like that meme. I know it's annoying, but it's very catchy. I like that. It one. is funny. All yeah. right. So, Amanda, you. Uh... Am I Vanessa? I need oh, hold on, hold on. I need Before, We we oh. haven't we you didn't realize that we do have royalty in the chat. Uh, Chris Mack of the Mac and Cheese family is here with us today. Did she not say hi to him, Vanessa? <laughs> What? Did he not? Who blocked him? Because I did not see him. I oh, I I'm like I saw him, but I was looking at. My oh, phone, okay, so there, I okay. I just saw him. He just popped in. I was yeah. like, oh, you, There you go. LOL. And he hasn't been around for a while. So we've got. He was here last to... week. Yes, he. Was. We fawned over him last week. Not that he should not deserve a proper hello, because he is royalty. Yeah. But he did see proof of life last week. Yes. So is there a shorter Dingling song? Because like four minutes is fucking a lot. Let me see here. Uh my Dingling. What's this dude's name? No, not Charlie Boogie. Where's the other guy? Chuck Berry. Oh, like five hundred bajillion people have done it. That's wonderful. 
Okay, my dingling. Hey, Johnny. Hey, ODF. I know, like, everybody else is like, what? Well, you're looking. What? Do you want me to do my thing? Sure. Which I've had up for, like, the last ten minutes, so chat, please congratulate me on doing my job without a reminder. Look at her. All right. Go ahead, Amanda. <laughs> All right. So, opening this week, today, actually, we had Perfect 10 Deluxe Hardcover Artist Edition. You probably have seen this on Indiegogo. It is now on Kickstarter. Also launching this week, we have Phenomenova. At least I think I'm saying that right. It's really hard to... Actually, I should say it's really hard to search for. Um, so this was uh, Von Coleman's launched yesterday. He's made goal. So congratulations. Yes. Also launching yesterday, A Damn Dirty Thing, which is Doc Blaylock's book. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually under Dark Gift Comics, but Dark Blaylock, I believe, is the one that is the driving force behind this. And he has launched yesterday. He's only at 32%. So feel free to share that out, check it out, all that nice stuff. Launching two, two days ago, three days ago, um, Star Circuit Chapter 2. This is Joe Catapano. He has a $9,000 goal. He is currently 41%, but he just started, so back to him. Also launching this week, Cordrath The Awakening by Andy Smith, who uh, nice and tight has gotten into some mailboxes this weekend. So congratulations to him for, for fulfilling that campaign. And he has made goal. Kind of easy to do a $500 goal when it's him. All right. Also launching, and this is just kind of on a whim, throwing it out there, because we do have some 90 fan, it's a, and it's an omnibus. Um, so those of you that are familiar, 90s, somebody needs to give me a little bit more. Was this? No. Image. Image, right? Because it's Liefeld's original idea? Yes. Okay. I'm like, I think I'm going right way. Um, so the Omnibus, this is Marat Michael's company that's doing this on Kickstarter. Uh, as we may or may not know, TMC, Mark Poulton, Coney Waves, whatever you would like to call him, did some writing on Evangeline. His writing is not in this Omnibus, but it might be in the next one if they do the next one. And also in news, this is not a launch, but they're making it into a movie. Yep. So Olivia Wilde, Margot Robbie, adapt comic Evangeline from Deadpool creator, Rob Liefeld. He has a name. All right. Also, whoops, that's just a thing. Closing Earthbound Grand Prix Part 2 of 6 by Narwhal. Four days left on Indiegogo. Also closing Blood Realm, Dawn of the Wolf by Robert Geronimo with nine hours left. This one has a pretty cool looking, um, what do you want to call it? Album? A vinyl? So check that out if you guys are into music and all that. And that's it. Unless you guys know of any else that are opened or closed, feel free to add that into the chat. No, I do not know of any other ones. All right. Let's go suffer together. Hold on. I need to get the metal melody real quick. Everybody get ready to clip it. I know. Everybody get ready to clip it. <laughs> Wait, why are they talking about my dingling? Huh? Uh, Maromi said something about my dingling. I'm not singing. Vanessa's singing. Yeah, it's it's me. Okay. We're going to do this all sorts of ghetto. It is what it is. I mean, press. Hopefully you can hear this. We got to do our alma mater. We must do I have our audio. When I was, was a little bitty girl, my grandma bought me a little toy. Gilbert Bell's hanging on a string. She told me it was my dingling. Oh, my dingling, my dingling, I want you to play with my dingling, my dingling, my dingling, I want you to play my my dingling. You're you are beautiful, chat, and my mom. Yeah, what well, she said, the grammar school. Bye, stop, stop with the vestibule. Every time that bell would ring, catch me play with my dingling. 
Oh, ma ding a ling, ma ding a ling. I want you to play with my ding a ling, my ding a ling, my ding a ling. I want you to play with my ding a ling. It's what? It's horrible. The only so, thing that would have made that better is if you had like an Ethan Van Skyver outfit. I don't. <laughs> the bird should make me one. Okay. All right. This is the long song. He's talking a whole bunch of shit to the audience. This is this is what you guys get. Yep. Blame Nobody Snuggie. gonna bother you. Here you go. Once I was climbing the garden wall, I slipped and had a terrible fall. I fell so hard, I heard them bells ring. Hey, I'll do my ding a ling ling. Oh, my ding a ling, my ding a ling. I want you to play with my ding a ling, my ding a ling, my ding a ling. I want you to play with my ding a ling. <laughs> there, there is somebody was probably going to be a president out there. When this shit was filmed. Da, 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 da. Ooh. Once I was swimming across Turtle Creek. Man, them snappers all around my feet. Sure, it was hard swimming across that thing. With both hands holding my ding a ling a ling. My ding a ling. My ding a ling. I want you to play with my ding a ling. My ding a ling, my ding a ling. I want you to play with my ding a ling. It, it, it is a beautiful little song. Probably not by me. I'm just, I don't know. The chat's like, why do I hear dogs howling? It ain't night. <laughs> Ellie says, why are we being punished? You're going to have to ask this man I right here. So glad my dog can't. So Ain't so sad. The cutest little song you ever had. Those of you who will not sing, you must be playing with your own dingling. My dingling, my dingling. I want you to play with my dingling. My dingling, my dingling. <laughs> I want you to play with my dingling. Is this song over yet? Holy shit. <laughs> Did we see you play with your dingling chat? Did everybody sing. My, play You're with my dingling. <laughs> dingling. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Henry Davis says, Why? <laughs> I can't sing the <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to Snuggy Jr., that was this is this is what I used to do when I was in in school, and I was like, oh shit, I didn't do my homework. Let me go shit somebody something out. Oh. Like, I did a lot in college. I'm surprised I had a three point three one three GPA. My mom was mad at me, but she didn't pay for that shit, so it'll be alright. Uh, but yes, <laughs> there it is. Somebody, somebody, this can be somebody's first time watching the chat, and they'll be like, I thought this was a comic skate show. What in the world is going on? Mm. Oh, I yes, uh, no, no. <laughs> Ellie said earlier, this must end. And then we go see what else you're saying. Oh, it's Ellie says, Oh, oh. no, so we're stuck in, in the Vanessa Vortex. Every man for themselves. Oh, Henry Bieber says that song has at least 83 verses. V, I know. <laughs> Suggy Jr. says, I would super chat you if I could. I think a lot uh, of people would. Oh, my God. <laughs> Rodin says that was beautiful. V, <laughs> <laughs> Eli says, Can you sing 63 more verses? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jim Hawaii says, I hope you got bullied for that. I, I made a promise. And I for and I forgot my homework. Oh. Lakovich says, "Did Vanessa have 420 edibles?" <laughs> so unfortunately, I'm a Fed, and also unfortunately, that is not legal in my state. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, Snuggy Junior <laughs> says, "Nice job, V." 
<laughs> Peter Seven says, this ain't my first time, and I'm still confused. <laughs> Oh, Marobi <laughs> says passing is passing. It's all about skill. Mm. Oh. Perth oh. says refund, which hi Perth, but he says oh. refund. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, send you, I'll send you that free ninety nine check in the mail. Jeremy Burt says encore. Oh. No, all right. Travco says to be fair, this show has far more. Uh, so far has more comic talk than a lot of CG shows, and those shows won't uh don't got a dingling. <laughs> I mean, I hope well seeing that most of comic skate is male, I hope there's a dingling. <laughs> uh Eli says, see one more, and I think my ears might burst. <laughs> Prater Savage says, Vanessa Siggy could bring a tear to a glass. <laughs> Chuck Berry, no, thank you. Jabez, Jabez says, I know that's right, sister friend. Oh. Ellie says, ambulance, stat. Stato is not here. Who is going to get this ambulance? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Read one more joke comment. <laughs> and Vaughn might burst. Oh, no, he died. All right, so, so oh. here we go. You're bringing a tear to Vaughn's glass eye. Oh, oh. there it is. So hold on. So Chris Max says, Vanessa, I've been here for 10 minutes. I'm like, bro, I totally missed you. Henry mm -hmm. Bemis says, V didn't say hi to me either earlier, but then again, I'm not the heir to a food conglomerate. That's I know. Uh Johnny Rando says, I'm lurking. Don't rat me out. Shit. Uh Carbon Art says, We don't need a dealing song. We've all heard it. Well, you heard it from <clears throat> me now. Travgo says, I demand a longer dingling. I can tell you that the most uh, tell you uh, most don't appreciate a short dingling. Aren't there implants these days? Well, oh. I mean, it's, it's not the size of the boat; it is the motion of the ocean, gents. That should uh, that should have been funded already. Get off streets, talk about Catapano. And he says, mm -hmm. "I backed the damn dirty thing yesterday, and I'll be backing Phenomenova tomorrow." <laughs> Look at him backing shit. I have seen uh, Joe getting around. Yes. He'll probably make more rounds. All right. Old Dirty Fatty says, it always makes me laugh when we get Vaughn going. <laughs> and then Chris Mack from the Great Mac and Cheese family says, I haven't smoked in more than a week, but I think I'll eat some mushrooms in some mac and cheese. <laughs> Within the mac and cheese. That's what he was talking about. They need to come right. up with a mushroom mac and cheese. I'm sure you could just make it, Amanda. I like uh... That's true. I like Henry Beam is going. Vanessa has the voice of an angel, a hell's angel. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. All right. So let's go do the boring shit real quick. I need to go find PowerPoint. Power, where the hell? So I did a thing today, chat, and I don't know where my PowerPoints are. Where's my calendar? <clears throat> I better not delete it because we will skip this. <laughs> Are you? Are, do you feel better, Bon? You, you got your you got your feet under you. Yes, yes. I think I think I think I'm safe to continue for now. Okay, I think I deleted my. Ca oh no! Oh no! Okay, so I'm gonna have to recover that later. We're skipping that. All right. So show notes. We have a sandwich Saturday today, right? Yeah, but that's at the end. We did that. We did that. So I do need to re uh, release our calendar. Um, everything has been spoken about. We'll be doing uh, Sandwich Saturday voting next week. So you still have time if you want to compete. Uh, and we'll look at. Oh, not this week. Voting next week. Voting next because we voted gotcha. last week. Uh, sure. So if you want to compete with that, uh, we'll go ahead and cover that. Uh, but now we're going to do the five five minute book report. And it's it's me, guys. I did it. Mm. I did it. So let me go get into 
because I have like five bajillion Twitters open right now and I just need to get into mine. Uh, excuse you, get me home. My face. Here we go. So like many of you out there, I did get my copy. I might be able to go back and forth. Ha ha. Ha ha. So I got my copy of black and white number two man versus machine. I haven't got it yet. I'm not blowing it guys. It's just five minutes. Look at it. Carbon hearts. Like not the book report, please. Oh my God. Yes. (laughs) Oh, Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, So shout out like to be comic friendly on this show. We're trying to can't do all drama all the time. Plus, it's it's called Comics Gate. If we were Gamer Gate, we'll talk about video games and freaking Fallout and all that nonsense that's going on. But we're called Comics Gate, so got to work a comic into it. Um, so I was reasonably excited to get this one uh, when it hit my my mailbox. Where is the cover? So I got the regular cover. <clears throat> and actually, it can't. So this it, it doesn't show up. Like the picture doesn't do it justice. So like the logo is spot gloss and black and white. And these two down here, Uncle Alfred, they're all spot gloss. The regular cover makes it T-Bear's work, correct? Yes. So this is our T-Bear. These are all the people involved. So we got art. We got writers. Pamela got into this. I was like, well, I'm gonna shut my I'm gonna talk a lot of shit about the writers then. Got Miss Pamela here, Joel Fulton, also known as Thunderbuns, Albino Thunderbuds. May may he have a good time out in the real world. So Brian, how Mag Naye, Naye, like Kanye, Magna Naye. I actually liked his colors. Magna Ye. Magna Ye. <laughs> Magna Ye. The Ye. I liked his colors in the book. Uh, the letters. Uh, I was I was mad at them. Who the heck they is were... Kurt Hathaway? He's the letterer, apparently. I think they right, so Eric Weathers. I think I remember Art saying that Kurt Hathaway was a, a old uh, colleague of his from his image days. Nice. So this is a bad picture. In retrospect, but you know, this is one of the splash pages. Um, I'll say about the book, it was a quick read. If you reread the first, I which I wish I did because they pretty much happen back to back as far as like story timeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I would suggest that read the first one again before you read the second one, uh, because it goes right, right, it's one continuous storyline. Uh, so this was one of the pages that I like. There's robots and shit, guys. Uh, so I like this. I liked how the colorist um, did it. Uh, I looked through the book, and unless I'm blind, which is a possibility, I'll be honest, there's no double page spreads at all in this book. And I I personally don't like that creative choice. I think he could have threw in one. I do like how he's really letting the letter uh, shine with the sound effects across the bottom. Yep. Uh, a lot of a lot of creators these days they don't put that in. Um, for me, that is the soundtrack of a comic book, and he understands that, and he's putting that shit in good. Yep. So um, I covered I covered the text because it would have been a spoiler. Um, yep. uh, so there's so as far as the lettering, I I think that is part of the comic. Um, production like one of the comic productions were like if you did a good job we didn't notice you right like it's it's when the lettering sucks and you're like why why am I not enjoying this this story as much you're like oh because the letter freaking sucks and it's I guess it's on for me it's on the lines of like um, spelling errors that I catch which is quite frankly rare I'll be honest um but yeah, that'll take me out of the story. But yeah, this lettering didn't take me out of the story. Um, there was I was no... gonna say, don't tell me you saw like grammatical stuff, Fulton. Yeah, Fulton. <laughs> uh 
So, and one of the problems in the first book is that he had a couple, R.T. Bear had a couple places where you had like walls of text. And there wasn't, not that, not that there weren't portions that were wordy because of the story, but there wasn't, there wasn't any portion where it was just like 500, um, 500 word bubbles on one page like it did on that um, black, black it, you know, there was a splash page with black it and it was like him and then half the page was like words, every and all the words. So there's none of that. Um, it was a quick read. Um, I took a picture of this panel because like I, re I recognize I recognize people. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if RT Bear had a draw in tier. I don't remember, but he drew, he drew in he drew in the bros. So good on him for that one. Uh, so I think everybody will be at least satisfied. Maybe not with the turnaround because I know that's something uh, I'm not satisfied with. But you know the product the product's outstanding, and I think most people are going to be at least pleased uh, with what they get. So that is the five minute book report. Um, that is open to everybody chat to include you get to work. Um, if you guys ever want to come on the show to either do your five minute book report or just want to do a write up, you could contact any of us on the panel and we'll either read it on your behalf or I'll send you the link and you could come up in here and tell us what you read. And it, and it does not have to be comics gate stuff. It could it's comics. So it could be American comics, new and old, because with with as fun as the the last uh Hillbilly book club was, <laughs> we may need to start reading some more shit books. <laughs> Cause Lisa had a good time. <laughs> it was amusing. Yes. It was funny. All right, so let me go catch up with the chat. Ellie says, I got my black and white. haven't read it yet. Well, I think you're going to enjoy it for what it is. Uh, Sister Rose says, Thunder Buns. Yeah, I miss that cat. I hope he's doing all right. Johnny Rando says, the black and white books are beautiful. The Roquefort variant is exquisite. And oh, uh, if I remember the email correctly, it's closing out on Monday. So if you're interested, you still have time. Uh, on Don't mods hold yourself back. I'm just saying. I believe it's still on Indiegogo until Monday. Lankovich says Pamela was the editor on Black and White from the from 1994. Good for freaking her. Uh, let's see here. Keep that money in the family, right? Right, Vaughn. Yep. So we can't wait until till Shane Davis teaches Pterodactyl how to flat. Don't color. Don't pay oh, yeah. these colorers all this fucking money. Keep that oh, yeah. in house. Well, most importantly, once she learns how to flat, then when he starts to. So no, no, honey, I need you to add like a highlight here, a highlight there. She'll like put her hand up and put it over his mouth and go, Shh. and that'll be the end of it. Mm. Mm. Prater Seven says the colors uh, look nice. Here we go. Sister Rona says art is better, uh, a better all around artist than most people give him credit for. He's more than an inker. That's that's what Pamela is for. You don't need to up him that, you know. Pamela should be like, you're more than an inker, baby. Can you imagine in Texas? You're more than... Maybe that's why he keeps on blowing out his pants. He's more than an inker. Uh, considering art's inking, I would have liked it to have a black and white version of this. Fair enough. Well, I mean, hey, maybe he'll do an artist edition like Andy did. I know uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, the bros were like, Hey, uh, Andy, I want to talk to you off screen about uh, off air about that. So I think we might be seeing more of those in the future. All right. So Jim Cox says, were there any, uh, was there any writing editing improvements for um, the first book? Yes, I believe so. Perth comics says, is that Hollywood story, uh, Hollywood storyboard artist, Dan Frega? Well, Perth, yeah. why you, why you gotta, why you gotta do him like that? Like the year of the rabbit's over. It is what it is. It's the year of the dragon now. Dragging him around. <laughs> that was wrong of me, chat. That was out of pocket. I apologize. I already gave you a dang a lang song. 
All right. Hypothetically, if I were to do a book report, can I do it in Reading Rainbow style? Yes. Hypothetically. I would love to see it. Yeah, I would love to see it. All right. <laughs> Kelsey threatened us with a second uh, dang fang. I saw that. He said he had issue six on his computer. I was like, can mm -hmm. I find out what this what this hussy is doing in space? Uh, let's see here. Must resist posting links. Well, you don't have power to post links. No shield Saturday. I know, right? Unless you have an alt account and it has a wrench. Uh, Century of the rabbit. Oh, let the rabbit rest. KSSS says, I thought I was more than family at the Olive Garden. Then I played Vanessa's Dangling <laughs> rendition and I was told to leave. They treat treated me just like <laughs> Dang. Oh, I saw my... Did I skip my friend of me? I thought I saw him. Here we go. Eddie Winkler is here. He says, hello all. And I'm going to say, hello, Eddie Winkler. I hope everything is well with you and your family. So, wait. Let me go... Let me go back to Eddie Winkler. I mean, this is none of my business. You don't have to... You deny, deny, deny. But where the... F where the hell did you go, Eddie Winkler? Am I... I can't can't find any Winkler anymore. Holy shit. But any Winkler, when are you going to kidnap your artist again? Because I really want to support uh, uh, your book. But like we need to kid kidnap your artist again. So just, just I, let me I know. I think I heard he's hoping to launch by the end of the year. Ooh, nice. Because I do need to yeah. need to go ahead and support you. It's sovereign. It's not. It is sovereign wolf, right? Like I'm not, because I I didn't see the title chat because I was like, isn't that what's his faces? But I was like, no, his is sovereign, and Eddie is sovereign wolf. Correct. So yes, yeah, so I would like to support sovereign wolf. So if we need to kidnap your artist back, just let get into slide into them DMs, Eddie, and we'll start planning that shit. All right. Oh, uh, let's go. So just as just as small notes. So Dale Keown celebrated three years in Comics Gate this week. I believe it was two either Monday or Tuesday. It was the beginning. Um, so send send a Dale Keown a belated happy third anniversary. Third anniversary, which feels like 15 years. Because I thought back I was thinking it was less than three. When you said that, like three, I'm like, has it been three years already? Yeah, because huh? well, the man said it was three years. So I'm like, mm -hmm. bro, that feels just about right. Because I'm coming up on six and it feels like freaking 66 years. I feel like I should be retired. Holy shit. Well, and also, Groken 3 is at the halfway mark today. We have reached 30 days out of 60. Roka Force, we have done a great job. But there's more that we need to do. We need to grind on them tra on them internet streets. You need to get down on all fours and grind on those suckers. And in real life, go ring the doorbell and ask if your neighbors have no know the goodness of, of the Roka Fort. I need you to go. Go forth and find all these comic people who are Roka Forcians and they just do not know. They just do not know. So there it is, there it be. All right, so let's go get into the actual um, show show. So we are on part two of Raise Hail, Praise Dale. So do you want to take the lead on that, Lon? Or... You mean talking about uh, what happened today? Yes. Okay. But I do, I do have visuals. Well, today... Uh, the uh, Cody Camelot took to the track at Talladega in the cyber car, uh, cyber frog car. And while he didn't do that great, it was literally his very first time racing or even driving or in a super speedway truck. And uh, real quick, for you to be competitive, you have to learn how to draft, which is you got to follow the car in front of you, like literally, like 
It's like mostly, you know, drive, you know, you drive like a car length behind them. No, you got to drive like that far away from the car in front of you to be competitive. And um, right off the bat, he got into the soccer hole in the middle and he went straight to the back and he struggled for the rest of the day. But he didn't wreck and he finished the race. And for that, hey, now here's the thing. Next week is at Dover. Okay, that car looks nice and pretty. Uh, that car is going to be beat to all hell next week. It's a, so it's going to be the same car? It's a different car. It, this is well, it's called a restrictor plate car. And the car that's next week is a regular like race car that you can race at most tracks. It doesn't have a restrictor plate in it, nor does it have other uh, attributes to the body. But uh, at short tracks, which is what Dover is, uh, because it's a short track, they, uh, as the saying goes, rubbing is racing, and they're going to bang off of each other all the time. His All of his fenders are going to be dented in. He's going to have wheel marks on the sides. His rear end's going to be busted in. Um, it's going to look like tell, a... Tell me more about his rear end getting busted. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You thought Cecil's uh, ass could get busted in? No, it, Diesel's ass is a virgin cherry compared to what Camelot's ass is going to look like at the end of uh, Dover. Dang. All right, so, and then he did not finish. He did not finish last. He placed 17. So yeah. he was in, it was in the middle. He was in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the biggest thing. He went a lap down, but of all the cars that went a lap down, uh, he there's like the 16th to the end was either one lap or more down. He was second. So of all the cars that were a lap or more down, he was the second car. So and I noticed that in the second half of the race, after it got lapped, he was able to pull in behind the lap drivers and hang with them. So he was learning the draft uh, without any training wheels. And uh, I did see where he, when the race first started, he was scared shitless and excited at the exact same time. And yeah, because he got, when you have, when you're driving, you've got the inside lane and you've got the outside lane. Okay. And if you get shuffled out of either of those lanes, you get shift, shifted to the middle. That's re what's referred to as the sucker hole. And when you're in the sucker hole, you got no help in front of you or behind you, and you just slip right to the back. And then once you slip to the back, it's hard to catch up to either for top or bottom lane to catch up. And so he just slowly drifted back. So, and yeah, I can see where uh, he's got a slight kiss slash scuff mark on the O. Uh, yeah, right here. So. And that's a little bit. But I mean, the car came out as far as the wrap. Oh, yeah. It came out. It, it looked great. Oh, yeah. There and, you go. Um, These two. Ethan, go. Was, Ethan was streaming at the track, and you could hear the, 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 the glee and the joy in Ethan. He was so excited about the fact that his car was, his car with, he, with his, his character was on the track. Well, I mean, here, I mean, this is a win. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, and I mean, I don't care what anybody says. Like this, this is definitely a win for Ethan Van Skyver. Um, so for the ones of you who are on, X gonna give it to you. Texas Mofo took like a clip from FS1 for it's like a two and a half minute clip, and in that clip, Cody Carr came into frame. So that was on TV. Yep. So it was on this frame for a while in that clip. I don't know if that yeah. was the best best clip, but yeah. yeah. So that that's you know, so that's a win. So we're not gonna deny. So I, I like to think that this show um call call you know calls it like we see it, but like we're fair. Like if there if this is a win, it's a win. So this is a win. Um he finished. He well, it's seventeenth, not exactly. Well, no, win, no, win. I'm talking about Ethan Van Skyver, <laughs> not Cody. I know. Well, win. I would I would still argue that for his very first time racing competitively on a restrictor plate track, 
uh, he finished the race. He didn't wreck, and he was only one lap down. And there was a lot of cars that were one lap down, so there's a lot of cars in the same same spot, same tight spot as him. So I mean, I'm call me a, say I'm biased, but I look at more as optim, optimistic that I've seen a lot of guys completely crash and burn. And here's the bigger thing, also. Um, okay, uh, hip hops, hip hops. Damn it. If you look at the back, if you look in the back bumper of Cody's car, okay, there's two yellow stripes in the back bumper area. Okay? okay. Those yellow stripes means that he's a rookie. And the hardest thing at a super speedway with restrictor plates. Are you is, talking about these? Yes. Is that, that, is that kind of like a student driver designation? You got it. You got it. <laughs> hey, we, we did him like that. We had no, to do no. Cody like that. He's like you a rook. Yes, he's a rook. And the thing is, though, is that at these tracks, it is very hard to get people to either line up behind you or want you behind them. So he, you got to keep in mind, did he do great? No. Did he finish? Yes. But most importantly, he earned the respect of his fellow drivers so, like, next year, if he does Daytona, he's going to have drivers that are going to be willing to race with him in a restrictor place. This is the one track where, where, where you need friends and you need teammates more so than any other track. At, at all the other tracks he goes to, he can bang the shit out of every single car in that track. And, hey, he's got, he doesn't have to worry about anything. At these tracks, you've got to have buddies. Were there any red flags? No. There's no only cautions? one yellow. There was, was one caution. yellow flag, which was a, the competition caution. And that occurred right when the other dry. Uh, no, right when that competition uh, yellow was ending. The number six had engine issues, which prolonged the yellow flag laps. So where it would have been only like five laps of yellow, it ended up being about about maybe like seven to ten, because mm. they had to push the they had to push that number six car all the way around the track into the pits again. Dang! All right, so let me go catch up with the chat. Um, Jimmy Hawaii says Leroy's too busy watching sumo and running in circles and games to promote Rocafort more. Leroy was streaming this morning, sir. Yeah. Um, Mister Yonofui, and welcome back to the chat. He's still driving. Someday he'll get to the finish line. That is the CG way. I, I I I feel some skid marks on my back on behalf of CG for that one. Uh, Carbon Heart says it's hard to pass when you start in the middle. Fair enough. Uh, Jim Hawaii says he started at twenty, moved up to seventeen. So there there it is. Actually, I think he started low. I can't remember if he started lower than twentieth or not. Okay. KSSS <laughs> says, Lee, Cecil's ass is a virgin. I thought this was a family friendly stream. W WTF? I'm hearing about Dingalangs, cunts, and Cecil's butt virginity. Sad. <laughs> well, you're, wel you're welcome, KSSS, and happy birthday. Uh, Carbon Heart says that uh, the car had some nice focus uh, clips on TV. See, there that's what it is. Andrew says, I'm back. What did I miss? Nothing. You didn't miss nothing. Uh, Carbon Heart wants to let you know, Amanda, it is a win. Okay. Such a co contrarian. Uh, Michael DJ says, Yep, it's an interesting new arena for CGTM to make its presence known. Yeah. See, and that was one thing I was wondering. I was like, what how do you measure the return on investment on this thing? And then the cynical part of me flared up and it was like, Vanessa, he crowdfunded this shit. There's there's no there's no return on investment because there was no investment. <laughs> I was like, damn. Well, the bigger thing uh, is I mean, I, I looked at it this way is that I would hope that Ethan is able to use this opportunity to network and whether it's the Cyber Frog logo, the All Caps logo, or the Comicsgate logo, 
if he can, I mean, you can take a look. They've got all these drivers will sell any part of the car for sponsorship dollars. Yeah. If he's able to get a just that size comic decay sticker on a truck or on one of the trucks or one of the Xfinity cars, elevates elevates exposure even more. So it's basically we're hoping somebody does a Google search. Does well, a, hey Surrey, what's <clears throat> all caps comics? Well, here's the thing: is that he is that next week I think is going to be even more important than this week, because next week all the cars start even. When I say even, is like nobody has a necessarily a uh, advantage of a because restrictor plate cars are expensive. Um, if Cody's able to finish in the top ten, he's going to have a greater possibility of uh, someone reporting wise, media wise coming up and talking to him. And from there it helps out, especially if Ethan's there and Cody's pointing to Ethan and it's, I mean, next week, if he can do well at Dover, and like I said, that car's going to look like a crumpled up tin can um, after the race, but all the cars are. Um, that's, it's, it's next week is a possibility for even bigger things, which because remember after that's the Tim cast car. So, Oh, there now is. he still has to qualify to race in the actual Dover race. Correct. Yeah. Like yes. they always qualify before. Okay. Yeah. But the biggest thing is though, is that because he's made two races a row, he finished 10th in the first one, finished 17th today. He's got more owner's points that he Let's put it this way. Uh, you can't say no, but there's a the possibility of him getting bump lessens each week, each week that he races. So the possibility, like with Phoenix, where he got bumped out, because basically he didn't get bumped out, he got fucked, is what happened. Um, he, that le- the likelihood of that happening is less and less the more races he makes. All right, so let me go finish up with the chat because they're they're going off. Jolly Grease says a lot of mechanical things or crashes can happen, so finishing uh, finishing it is a great feat. Yep. And Jim Hawaii says, I wonder if people try to hit you on purpose if they see you with rookie markers. You, you don't know, maybe I don't know. Let's see, don't they get doxed points if there's like thought that this intentional uh, mismaneuvering or whatever? That's if, well, a lot of times what happens with that is uh, they will dox points, but more importantly, they'll make you, they'll, they'll suspend you from races. And, and generally that happens if there's a known beef between two drivers. And if one driver, reta- let's say driver A and B and driver B and, like accidentally knocks driver A out of the race. And two races later, uh, driver a intentionally knocks out driver b then there'll be uh driver a's in big trouble all right let me go catch up with the chat uh michael here says our driver we developed for uh for richard petty pete hamilton won both daytona and talladega in his rookie year and of course is still only rookie to do that guys uh let's see here everybody's saying hello to people we got Ray Haylock, Tug's web guy. Welcome back, Ray. It's been a while. Or at least it's been a while since you talked in the chat. You may have been lurking, which is all good. We we love our lurkers also. How far do I need to go back to hear Vanessa sing uh, her ding-a-lang? Uh, it was, right after well, the campaign. Cap- yeah, so find, find Amanda campaigns. It happened right after. Shane, Shane said, why isn't uh, there... A Jim Hawaii. So I answered his call into the void. However, this account goes by many names. I change it every two weeks. Okay, so you're like a man of a man of mystery. Uh, let's see here. Cicerona says this was a vast vanity project for Ethan. It has nothing to do with CG. Well, I never said it had something to do with CG. I just said this was a win for Ethan. I think Ethan. I know the alt. Well, I look at it this way: is that it did generate enthusiasm for, like I said, I mean, I've 
I think you guys all hear me a lot of times clam up when it, when it comes to Ethan, but this was for Cody and everything. I mean, I can't have nothing but positive things to say. I mean, like I, and I even said in the comments of Ethan's stream, uh, after the race, after the season's over, they'd normally just rip that vinyl off that car. It's like, hey, Ethan, see if they'll give you the hood. Because that was a big deal for Cody and his team. See if they can give you, see if uh, and the hoods aren't, see if they, they can give you that hood for you to hang it in your studio. That would be I, cool. Well, I mean, I'm sure he'll take it. I don't know if he has any room in the basement for that stuff. Oh, so he, for that? I'm but, sure, uh, yeah, he, he may have to get rid of his Jabba freaking thing. His gigantic freaking pleasure slave pleasure thingy that he bought. Or maybe he needs to get rid of his Peloton. Something has to go. Eric DeGuapo says this was more of a distraction than a win. If you're looking through the lens of, uh, if we are looking at it through the lens of fulfilling books, as a YouTuber, it's a win. Well, I would agree with you. But Ethan is a YouTuber, so it is a win for that side. Uh, Carbon Heart says Cyber Frog was visible on TV for a good amount of time. To be nationally televised like that is big. I guarantee people were searching for Cyber Frog. Ray, Ray is giving us apologies. Sir, you don't need to apologize to us. You're always welcome to come into the chat. Uh, and KSS says Tom Cruise is 10 years older than Cecil. That's frightening. Well, are you are you saying that Cecil looks old? Wait, what are we doing? All right. Old Dirty Fatty says, Vaughn, what kind of engine does he have? Do you know that? That I don't know. I just know that it's a specific type of engine for for super speedway slash restrictor plates, which is different than the race, than different than the engine they'll have at Dover. And I remember uh, this crowdfund, it not only paid for the wrap, but it enabled him to get a better engine to make him more competitive. Um, the guys that were running like one through 10, those guys got like, hand me down top of the line engines from the cup teams um he didn't have that but the engine that he was able to get instead of, okay here's where the cup teams are here's where okay here's where the cup teams drivers are in their rare equipment here's what he had his engine with what ethan was able to do for him enabled him to get an engine that brought him more to here okay. so he couldn't get this engine but he at least got a more competitive engine that made him more competitive at the track. All right. So let me go finish up with the chat so we could move on from the, the circle, the driving in circles. Uh, Mike TV dub. And hey, man, welcome back. Uh, Tim Pool wouldn't have sponsored Cody if Ethan hadn't brought uh, if Ethan hadn't brought it to his attention. Yes. Mar the Maromi mentioned warehouse. He does have a warehouse. He could put that hood in. Let's see here. Also, he says, maybe give it to Hunter. Hunter likes cars. Oh, Hunter was paying close attention. Yep, let's see here. There was a total of zero books sold because of that car. Damn, Eric Guapo. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Carbon Heart says, because I do allow mutual combat in the chat. Uh, but Carbon Heart, and this is not mutual combat. You guys are just disagreeing. Uh, Carbon Heart says, talk about... Uh, being negative and then people find uh finding out your uh about your project or your your brand is still a win uh and i agree it is still a win let's see here it was kind of interesting i was watching a little bit of uh ethan streaming from the pit and uh they took a walk to look at some of the other cars and to see how it looked and stuff like that and then there was some branding that even made you know ethan was like what is that i think it was what nerd nerd fuel He's like, oh, what's that? Maybe that's some comic book related thing. And then next thing you know, there's probably 15 people that probably Googled it if they did not know it that had answered what it was, you know? Mm -hmm. So not that that's going to be the same instance everywhere, but some people might be curious enough to Google it. Mm -hmm. So Angel Curry says, I have to listen with my headphones so my mom doesn't hear V's potty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right, Angela. Yeah, I mean, Sheesh. I don't, I don't understand why you guys don't listen to the show with with headphones on, because at least when I get mad, you can like, it's kind of like the Reedy thing, like when she squeals, like you could throw the headphones off of your head. It's the and same still thing. hear you. 
Yeah, it's still <laughs> here. Uh, Mike TV Doug says, I was sick for the past two weeks. Still sickly, but much better now. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Snugless, being who he is, says, LOL, according to Google, searches for Cyberprog went from zero to 100 for an hour, then back to zero. Uh, and is there really I, a way to determine that, or is Snuggy just joking? No, you could you could look up search terms in Google and it'll pop out metrics. Um, That's pretty Angela, cool, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. Angela Curry says, "What the heck were those special brownies? Those were made by her child, who who is who is available for for <laughs> it bar was cake, mitzvahs, not brownies, yeah. <laughs> but it was made by her child." She's raising that kid right. Uh, Ellie says Vanessa's too hot for prime time. She's 11, Angela. Cut her some slack. For real. <laughs> and then Carbon Heart says that's still 100 searches versus none. All right. So staying on kind of the Ethan topic. So, yeah. so, Eth so Ethan made a post. He he's saying that he's changing his ways. So I'm going to make an effort to not ridicule this or call it gay. I'm trying to be supportive of people's efforts to make weird merch and sell it to their devoted audiences. I'm a changed man. Heart frog. And then giant Jenga nuts. I don't know who this person is. Uh, has shown some, is this some of the merch. Menace? No. This like is, this uh, is, Geeks uh, and yeah. Gamers, FNT, whatever you want yep. to call them. Okay. Yep. So this is like as plushy, Mauler, Gary of Rivia, God, X-Ray Girl. So it's merch. And he's trying not to call it out. But I was thinking about it because we've been we've been hearing, particularly from creators, that hey, please read the books, right? Um, so with these plaf video platforms that are free. If something is free, that means you're the product, right? Like your watch hours are what everybody is clamoring for. So these people build up audiences and then they are like, especially YouTube, because I from time to time get these emails saying, hey, this is this are a couple of things that, you know, once you get an audience, you can monetize. We'll let you sell merch. We'll let you whatever sell to them, which is capitalism. And I'll even show you a non, let me see, please have it down here. Oh, you're not selling shit on this one? That's funny. I, I was, surely you're going to do it. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <that's, that's... laughs> Sorry. What did he say? You Speaking of merch, me. I'm working on a Vanessa doll. Pull the string and she sings my dingling. Pull it again and she says cunt. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I mean, I would get that. So, I mean, here's the thing. People want to be able to support. People like supporting things that they like. You know, um, people, you know, when, when we were all younger and we had our favorite band, like we would put posters on our walls, we would buy their shit. Uh, if you go to a con, maybe you'll buy autographs or whatever. Uh, people like to whatever level that they can support people that they favor. And these guys have people that favor them. Uh, Mauler's kicking ass. So I guess I didn't know this was like crowdfundish. This is more. So Mauler's killing the game out of the four of these. Um, but if if your audience doesn't read your books and a lot of your audience says, hey, I'm just backing this to support you, you're in the same game. You're in the same game. C comic books, the last time I checked, are mer is merch, is merchandise. You're in the same game. Um, and I think. For comics gate, the comics part is important. Uh, obviously, I think it's more important than what some creators think, um, especially timeliness to keep excitement up. Uh, also, to make shows like this easier to do because if people aren't launching and people aren't fulfilling, it gets kind of hard to talk, you know, as a semi almost kind of sort of weekly show. Uh, current event, a CG current event show. 
to talk about current events if there ain't shit going on. So it's like the comics is merch. You're doing the exact same thing. Stop it. But do you think, okay, maybe this week would have changed things. But if we were looking at things last year and say someone came out with a Cecil doll like you see as there. You don't think there would be supporters of that in all Hold of CG? Hold on, where, where's this? Where's my fucking plushie? <laughs> where is my cyber frog fucking plushie? Where is my Barnaby fucking plushie? I almost bought that Chinoo plushie. Oh, right. I thought about it. Like, yes. Yeah, so you got those people- slam dolls like uh, TMC, Mark Fulton, Coney Waves, whatever you guys know them as, yeah. has those slam buddies. They redid the slam buddies. So, like, all of TMC's characters have slam buddies. You have Edwin Acevedo has a slam buddy for his, uh, the ace. Um, those, like, they're not doing gangbusters, but people that like those IPs have bought those plushies. Wouldn't it be the same thing? It is, it's the same. It's the same thing. It, it's all. It's all. At the end of the day, it's all merchandise. And there's people who want to buy merchandise. You know, and and I just thought it was funny that he's like, I'm not going to call this gay. Give me my. I would actually still like. I'm. Or I'm a sal, a sal plushie. I would buy a sal plushie too. I would buy this plushie, and if you make it as cute as this, I would. I would break. My 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 finances will break the Ethan ban and go on fucking eBay. I'll I'll even back a fucking campaign to get these goddamn plushies. And it's like, so my my whole thing is that he's in. Yeah, the but does that game. appeal more to the female crowd than the male crowd? Like I'm I know sure. Chanu went pretty well. But, I'm you sure know, CG is definitely more male than female. It is, and- it is more male. There is a demand. I'm sure he would still be profitable about it because, like, there's uh, we're an older group. People have kids, and how kids get into hobbies is usually through family members. Like a, a kid, a kid didn't just once upon a time ask their parents out of the blue to take them horseback riding. For the most part, it's usually mom or dad are into that, and they get forced, and either they like it or they don't. So, like, you guys like comics. You guys have ki- maybe, you know, younger kids. I know some of you have nieces and nephews. You would probably slide them a fucking plushie. And and honestly, this is just my excuse to be like, give me my fucking cyber fog fucking plushie. I like this freaking post. Where is it? <laughs> Damn. That that in freaking Shane Davis, if you're still here, where is my Barnaby plushie? There's I only nine see. likes on that. I didn't even see this whole tweet thread at all. There's 19. I, you know. Wait, there's 19. Yeah, there's I 19 know. People. Only 19. That should be way more popular than that. But, but what do you want these people? It's a Saturday, Amanda. They're, they were watching Cars. It, it, you want too much from people sometimes, I think, Amanda. I'll give you that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew says kind of a bummer that the Cyber Frog tar- car was so cool. And when uh, they find Ethan on YouTube, they get trash cast frog horn. Mm. That's a good point. That is a good point. Uh, Lord Nemesis said same, same, but different, but still the same. It's just he's in the same game. Mm hmm. Why does the as plushie look like Captain Frugal? Maybe it is Captain Frugal. I don't know. Now and I'm look- assuming these these characters make way more sense to those that watch them, right? Yeah, but as, I don't as, I don't yeah. get I've heard these names thrown around, but I I don't really get it. Well, this is as this is Gary. I don't know who this well, because their names are. are in it, but I'm like I yeah. you know they're little. I don't know. I think this one action figure personas don't make much sense to me. I think this is the coolest one out of them. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. I was like, Gary, he ain't fighting nobody. Uh, Mike TV Dub says the as plushie comes with soiled curtains as an add on. Dang. Jim Hawaii says, and I, I had an idea for a Cecil doll three years ago. 
Was it a Cecil doll or a different version of the sex doll? Because it's pretty much the same as Cecil. Man, you didn't have to do Cecil like that, Jesus. Cecil um, would find that to be a compliment. Uh, hey, as long as he doesn't slide into my DMs all greasy <laughs> and shit, <laughs> typing in an Italian frick fucking accent, we're good. With the little with the little hand thing that I've socially appropriated, it's as part of my uh, appreci cultural appreciation. I I've appropriated the Italian pinchy pinchy finger thing. I use it instead of flicking people off. I feel a lot better when I do it. Uh, Sister Ronan says Graham has made a new plushie. Is Ethan gonna shit on Graham? I don't know. Question mark. Uh, KSS says, I want a mange action fig figure with swivel arm action grip. Mm. Angela says, didn't they almost come out with dolls? You know what, Angela? I'm going to be 100 because we're just being honest all this stream. I thought dolls was dildos and I was scared for a second, but then I saw it was dolls and I was like, okay. Carbon Heart says, the difference is that as sucks though. Well, I don't watch him, so. Machi, yeah, you could just make Moich. Moich you, could, you could just make that as as my doll. See here. Oh uh, Sister Runa says we need an Eric the Guapo slam buddy. <laughs> so what? So these people could treat it like a fucking voodoo doll? You you forget that Eric's my boy. I'm not gonna have people just be slamming him and shit. I mean, unless he likes it, then like, hey, let it, <laughs> let it do what it do. Let's see here. Males would be more action figure oriented, but every once in a while, I'll get one. See, like he'll he'll get a plushie. If a dude buys a plushie for himself, something is wrong. But you guys have nephews and stuff. Like you guys, you act like you guys don't have access. Well, dang, let me not say it like and that. And then you guys to have pass it along. Yeah, you guys have family members who are young, who are young boys who would want, maybe not, obviously this is more geared towards an adult, but who wouldn't, if you have a five-year-old nephew, if you have a three-year-old nephew like Vanessa does, he would want a cyber frog plushie of the age. Michael DJ says, uh, not just female crowd. My brother-in-law who uh, wouldn't read a comic, but he wanted a cyber frog hoodie to wear golfing. And that is, tell me some, it's still a great hoodie. It's still like my favorite one to wear. Yep. I'm going to post my Ethan riding a cyber frog image in that thread. Give me a sec. R riding one of these. Let's see here. <laughs> Sister Rose says X-ray girl is 69% funded. Hey now. Is that is that really what it was? And they let that slide. They they definitely didn't notice that shit. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my goodness. Uh okay. So Jav and hey Jav. X-ray girl is their producer and has been streaming with all of them for years. I don't watch them, so I don't know who that who that has. I don't know who that cut is. That cut is new to me. <laughs> oh, we're, shame, yeah, we're, shame. I know that uh, thumbs down. Just put the thumbs down, slide into, slide into these here DMs. Is this uh, the X, end the final X, end of the chat? This will be the end of the chat. Not, not okay. any of the others, not me yelling. It's like you said 69. You said slide in them DMs. Yeah, go, go get some butter. Go get some butter, rub yourself down, and slide up in these DMs. All right. So Henry Bemis says, uh, CG gets smaller and smaller as people keep alienating other fan groups. Genius business decision. I mean, we mentioned that when uh, Ethan was like, hey, maybe we need to do a, a For the Fans Fest. And, we, and my answer was like, Vaughn's answer was, how are you going to do that when you alienated half a CG? And my answer was, CG, six people, right? How are you well, going to do a con? Five in the con United States, at least. Yeah, how are you going to do a con? Is it still six people? people these days? I don't know. Well, my bigger thing with that, with, with what Henry says, is 
I view that differently is that the one thing that I've noticed is the smaller shows for the little guy in CG, I'm noticing that their streams are slowly getting a larger audience because those that have been in CG for a long period of time, that those that haven't given up have given up on Ethan and those other five people and they're migrating to the smaller creators. That I think is where our strength is, is now the smaller creator and not the bigger creator. And, and you know what? We're going to have to go put a pin on pin in that because we do have that. Here it is. We do have that as a topic. We're just going to put, put this right there. to something to, uh, Give you nightmares, gents. Uh, let me go. Mike TV Dub says, "What makes these plushies cringe?" With Mauler as the exception is, as Gary and X Ray Girl are not fantasy superheroes, it should just be their YouTube personalities. Uh, fair enough. I said, if a dude buys one for himself, well, I mean, um, listen, the customer is always right in matter of taste. If a dude wants to buy a plushie, then let the dude buy a plushie. Now, if he tells the world about it, I'm like, why are you buying a plushie, bro? <laughs> I I'll be there with you, like, why are you buying a pl plushie, bro? And, and then, courtesy of Jim Hawaii, Nightmare Fuel. Vanessa's cha channeling her own Shane Davis there. What, having struggles reading? Yeah. Johnny Randall's like, I'm tired of this. Vanessa's just tossing around that C word. Is she British? My sister-in-law is like from London. Like she's for real British. Vanessa can tango. Uh, and and welcome, Sir Angus Fungus. Give me the butter, Vanessa. I mean, I'm sure you have butter in your uh, refrigerator. Um well, not that New England accent. Get that butter. Uh <laughs> I just like saying butter. Butter. It's not, it's not as fun saying, like, go get the butter. It's like, no, if you're going to do something naughty with some butter, you need to call it butter. Because butter is what we put on your toes. Butter is what you use when you're being naughty. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that clarification. <laughs> uh, CGTM did call uh, the Graham Nolan uh, Yara low effort, I remember. But, man, we talked about that, like how uh, July, July, based off what Ethan said, like doesn't give direction. So it's like, oh, well, you know? Yeah, and I remember, and my thing is when, when that came up, my first response was, if you look at that Yara, Graham Nolan cover for Yara, whatever it is, it's no different than a generic Batman cover that Ethan that a lot of times Graham would have to do because I don't know how many times Graham would have to do a cover and they didn't have any gave him direction. He just you know, Batman swinging on the line with buildings in the background, Batman crouched over in a gargoyle. I mean, it was just a generic. I mean, Graham's done them before, so it's one of those words. Plus, also, Ethan's done uh, plenty of those. Himself. In fact, I don't know. Move on. Yeah, move on. Yeah. Let's go. So I thought it was a weird take for Ethan mm -hmm. to do. Let me go catch up with the chat. Uh, Old Dirty Fatty says, I just want to hang out. Uh, I just hang out in the slums and John's lawn box. So you, you found a spot. Mm -hmm. uh, Jab says, That's where I'm, I'm at now. Thank the God Emperor that Leroy is back. See, he was streaming this morning. You just have to be up. You have to be up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Snuggy Jr. says, CGTM calls anything not CGTM low effort, even when Fatty's covers have been super low effort. God damn. How long? How long what's the expiration date on CGTM? Uh, I don't know. I know that's still a work in progress. He's still in litigation. I'm sure he can't give us any details. Uh... Ray Hale, or his, his lawyer said, don't do it. Uh, Ray says, only us Aussies could use the C word with the best. I don't know. Some Brits. Carbon Heart says, look up the Moody, the last tango in Paris. Uh, I will keep that in mind. Uh, Richie Dupe says, uh, what? He's throwing uh, 
what's he throwing uh, shade on Graham for? Graham did a cover for the Ripperverse, and they said it was low effort. I'm like, bro, come on. Yeah, but the thing is, though, is the way Graham responded, Graham basically responded like this. And it was, it was beautiful. He just was like, he just like flicked off the comment as if, as if their criticisms means absolutely nothing to him. And basically, he probably blew. had people say worse about worse things. So, you know, good for him. Although, to be fair, I didn't really care for his cover. Well, I know, but my thing is, is like I said, he just, he just, he, just, he flicked it off and he blew all the steam out of their comments that they just, they couldn't even come back at him. Yeah. So that's what that was about. And that felt like that happened like three years ago. That was probably like, what, six weeks ago? If that. Something like that. Uh, so Amanda wanted clarification from you, oh, dirty fatty. Indie slums or CG slums? Sorry, I was just getting people going in the chat. You don't need to get them going. Hmm. Uh, who uh, would have a would have to go back and look at the contacts. Uh, goofing on a cover is water under the bridge, in my opinion, when everybody was helping Graham's daughter not that long ago. I think that speaks more. Well, I mean, I just, I personally thought it's weird when, you know, Shane, you know, Shane did a cover for ISOM and he said, hey, I didn't get a lot of direction. So, like, this is, this is what I presented. Um, Ethan even said for his cover, like, he didn't get a lot of, direction like i want you i want this cover to look like this and graham probably got it and that was the thing that i was like eh. and we talked about it in the past but i was like you you know those two gentlemen in particular like you have worked with eric july like you you know what type of directions that man mm -hmm. gave he probably gave graham the same level of directions and like well you could Graham's uh, response uh, probably most likely is yeah you know, what you paid for yeah you give me a direction you think that's what you got yep there it is and it was the first of the line so it's not like there was a whole bunch of uh stuff out there for him to search himself yeah that's one thing i don't know eric eric july does play or at least what i've seen in the past i haven't been following him that much uh is that it seems that with his a lot of his contractors, like he plays it close to the chest. And I'm like, you have Kanan White in your office and he has access to everything. It sounds like you just ask him. You ask him for a variant copy and like wait to on on number ones, you let him do the variant cop, you know, the ver the variant, and then two, three, four, you can start getting other people to do it. So let's go see. Uh, Jim Hawaii says, I think Shane, he said he got no art direction from July. Ch Shane is still here. Remind me what you said. <laughs> uh, Graham's yard recover was mediocre at best, and he knew it. Uh, Eric DeGuapo says, not every cover is going to be a home run. It's okay to have a mediocre cover every now and again. And then Cicerona says, Ethan does plenty of questionable anatomy. People in glass houses and all that stuff. Well, I mean, the first the first rule of comics is does it look cool? So mm -hmm. you could you could break anatomy if as long as it looks cool. And Eric, one hundred percent, no shame there, not shaming. All right, so uh, something happened towards the end of this week. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to play this clip with audio. It is a minute and forty, but my computer has been giving me issues when I try to do this shit. We go check. My CPU is at 21%. Memory is at half. I should be able to play this. So apparently the Jack show got a, I wouldn't say spicy. I did watch more of it. So this was last week's Jack show on John's channel. Um, towards, if you go towards like two hours, 30 minutes, that's around where this little portion starts. Um, I thought, so I first watched it as the clip. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, but apparently this became a thing. So let me go big screen, big screen it. By the way, I thought your response the other day on Twitter where you were screaming like, these guys didn't help me, was the most feminine shit ever. Oh. You know, 
the way, I thought your response the other day on Twitter where you were screaming like, these guys didn't help me, was the most feminine shit ever. Do oh, not scream for other men to help you. Grab an oar, help yourself. Geeks and gamers wrote a big Do essay not about fucking it. be screaming, help oh me, Gary, God. help me, Jeremy. It was gay. See, so that Jeremy, Jeremy. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? No, he's talking to John. I'm talking to John. It was gay to scream for help from other people. Cecil, he wasn't screaming for help. He was. was, Please help me. He was pointing out the hypocrisy. John, you're living in a world where you can insult guys every day for years. Did I? No, Ethan did. Oh, okay. And we were both on streams where he did it. And we were sitting next to him while he did it. And you sit next to him every day. And they go, help us. Help us, please! Help is us, that what that But he never said that. When does John ask for help? The bridge is burned. Is, is that what I said? I live is in the that, real uh, world. Oh my real god! World. Like all the principles have been out the fucking window. There's, there's like no principles in this space anymore okay. well, because you got everybody's well, turning fucking cutthroat, and none of that, none of that's got to do with fucking me getting fucking kicked out from fucking uh, C two E two. So if you want to say, hi, it's okay, hi, you're feminine, hi, fuck off. Because John is learning that I'm right. That That's all it is. He didn't know I was right before. Now he knows I'm right. Is feminine, begging no, his John was going, oh, my God, these guys are zeros. What the They're hell? fake. It was, They're please fake. help me, please. It was feminine. No, it- We're not going to watch it again, chat. We're good. So- <laughs> thought- Shit. Spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, we are. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> So I I watched it and like within the I didn't watch the whole five hour freaking stream because uh, fuck that shit. Um, so allegedly based off so based off what people said on X, gonna give it to you. John did a rumble on Rumble, so he did a stream on Rumble, and he said that I'm out of the Jack Show. Fuck that shit. I'm done, and I cannot. I cannot find that stream. I don't know if you have to like. I don't know how Rumble works. I'll be honest. I um, saw someone share the Rumble link, and I believe it was privated. Okay, so like he would just. I he could have been mad. He could have been serious. I don't know. But there was a, there has been a lot of R.I.P. to Jack show on Twitter. Um, and then Cecil did this little apology, public apologies to John Malin. Hold on, let me go make that big for the blind. Public, public apologies to John Malin. Common pussy was out of line. My point was a simple one. Don't expect people, uh, don't expect help from people we insulted. The collective we, I know John didn't insult anyone. I was being a dickhead and pushed it too far. I don't know. Maybe you should. he should have just left it. I left don't know. Where I it is one of those where it's like, he, got, he has the excellent point of, when you tell people to go shit, to, to fuck off and go piss off, then when don't expect help from anybody. I mean, here's my thing is when it was like when he's when all this started last May, when he started one of his rants on Kickstarter, he did it in such a way that I took it personally that basically he was yelling at me for backing someone on Kickstarter. And that is when a lot of his CG clout started to go downhill. It's done nothing but go downhill since then. And so this whole rant by John and this temper tantrum, oh, wow. Oh, gosh. For once, he was on stream. I believe he actually wasn't KFAB because he was generally pissed. And I'm looking at it going, okay. Well, so it, this reminds me, you remember when... Um... And maybe you guys in the chat don't remember this, but you remember when Geeks and Gamers did that thing with with uh, Zack Snyder, and he was like, "No Asian hate," and kind of kind of ruined their thing. Yes. So like Ethan went in on it, and he had Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, and they were talking, and he was like, uh, "You know, Ethan was giving his take," and then Jeremy said. Where were you when my channel has been attacked? And he was like, what? And Ethan says, what? He was like, yeah, my channel has been attacked. I've been dealing with that. Like, just, and Ethan was like, oh, I didn't know. And he was like, exactly. And I, basically what it comes down to is like, do these people give a fuck? 
<laughs> you know, not not even not even the insulting part or whatever. Mm -hmm. If people were involved or not, it's like, hey, do these people over at Fandom Menace give a fuck about Comics Gate? No. And the answer seems to be no. And there was a time where the what the fuck are, what the hell are those circle was called? Not the Overton window. Do you, do you the little two circles overlapping, Vaughn? Amanda, save Venn me. diagram. Yes, the Venn diagram. Once upon a time, the Venn diagram be between Comics Gate and the Phantom Menace had great overlap. I would probably say like seventy five percent. A lot of people who are in Comics Gate once upon a time came, or came through Phantom Menace, but now the Venn diagram probably has like an overlap of ten percent. If that, if that, like. Yeah, it's just you You get to the point where, like, okay, they don't give a fuck. Well, that's them not giving a fuck is not their problem. Mm -hmm. It's our problem. And that's, and you know, that that ties into the uh, For the Fans Fest because in 2020, during the height of COVID, how Ethan sold, the, sold that is like, hey, we're going to get LawTube, we're going to get Fandom Menace, we're going to get Gamergate, and it's going to be all, all the cultural you know, the counterculture people, we're going to have our own con. Well, now that we have had spats, and I'm using the royal we, Comics Gate, we have had spats with all those fucking people. You know, how are you going to have a fucking con? Like, well, how are you, you going gonna to do that and be profitable? Because, like, how much are those tickets going to cost? You know, well, like, no, go fuck yourself. And the thing is, though, is it really, when it says that, okay, when we say CG, we're talking about the six people because all the other, all the other CG creators, they go in those shows with absolutely no problem. They're well, and they're welcomed with open arms and, and smiles and fist pumps. I mean, it's the problem is the six. The six well, are the ones that are causing the problem. Well, I mean, and it's not and even like that we're, starting to shrink. Yeah, well, I mean, we're not even. I don't think. Yeah, we're not going to name names. I mean, you guys can name them in the chat. I'm not going to highlight that those comments. If somebody is watching, you know, uh, watching later, they can look at the live chat if they want. But we have been in a stance of this unity for you know, definitely actively since January. And then with other sections, and I'm not saying we all have to agree with each other 100 percent, 100 percent of the time. That is not going to happen. Um, but the keeping the main thing, the main thing, it's like, man, you know, we haven't been doing that well. Probably the last two years, we haven't been doing that well. And I like, I'm not, I'm not surprised. I think Gary said like something on the lines of, hey, no one should be just kicked out of a con for whatever. Well, I mean, those things aren't public. You have to buy a ticket. And we went over this last week. The ticket is the contract. You, When you buy a ticket, you agree to their terms of service. And a part of their terms of service for Read Pop in particular is that the management can boot you out at their discretion. And you agreed to those terms when you bought a ticket. And the fact, well, you know, that's an opinion statement. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on back to that. So I just I just saw this and I thought it was aside from the argument, I think it's sad. If it's true that the Jack show is gone, which I don't know if it is or not. Uh, we'll find out on Thursday or get an Things indication. Things could have been said in the heat of the moment. You're right. Yeah. So, but if but if Jack Show was gone, we have lost an, another another part of the connective tissue of Comicsgate. Once upon a time, most people watched Ethan at least once or twice a week. You know, in 2020, he was fucking must watch TV. Like you must watch that guy. Uh, Jack show on dominated Thursdays. Like it was once upon a time, it was even ridiculous to even say I'm streaming on a th Thursday night. Cause everybody in comics gate will like that's Jack show night. What are you doing? And it's not like that anymore. So like, yeah, it's, it would be, 
it would be a destruction of a pillar when we've been doing nothing but destroying pillars and not understanding how this movement organically came to be, why it was so effective in, we'll say, from 2017 to 2020. You know, why it was so, you know, and we're just like changing the model so quickly that it's either not adapting or people aren't getting behind the adaptation. So one of them being Fun My Comic, which I know people have issues with that platform. But here it is. Indiegogo is not the Indiegogo of the past. Uh, here, here is a platform that's actually owned by hashtag one of us. And all these creators who could, you know, who could get some money into that platform so improvements can be gone, done and, you know, support of other projects on that platform. They're like, eh, well, and I'm not, and I'm not blaming them on the business side because run your, for the creators who are wearing ponchos and sombreros, run your business to what is best for you. Um, but yeah, like as, as a movement, like now we're all over the fucking place, which good, bad, or indifferent. It is what it is and what it is, it is. Um, I mean, what Baron is on, like fucking everything. Mm -hmm. I think if China had a freaking crowdfund, he'd be on We Blow, <laughs> We Blow crowdfunding. Like he's on everything. Graham's Graham's about to be on everything. Mm -hmm. Like it, it makes it hard for Malin to do a what's his show called? Comicsgate presents or Comicsgate Live? What? No, Ethan's Comicsgate Live. I think he's Comicsgate presents. Whatever his comics he hasn't gate done like one for a while. Yeah, because like if you're like, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna platform you if you have a Kickstarter. Well, shit, we're it's 2024. Who doesn't have a Kickstarter at this point? Yeah, you know. All right, let me go ca catch up with the chat. Unless one one of you two have something, just um. Well, just to point out, I know you're gonna get to him in the chat, but there's a couple comments about how. You know, Jack Show is on the downward spile, and who really cares about the Jack Show? Well, I know me included, and probably the majority of our audience does not watch the Jack Show. But I was looking back at uh, the past episodes, and they, you know, like last week's was 14,000 views, the week before that was 16,000 views. They still have people watching them. That is, it's still one of the top comic skate shows that gets put on. So with it being gone, like you said, it definitely is if, a if hit, it's gone, whether or not yeah. you like it or not. If it's gone, because who gone. knows? Yes. All right. So let me catching up, everybody. There's some a little bit of disagreements. All right. Uh, get that one. Get that one. You guys are being talking. Shane Davis says, I'm working on the nine live site. Uh, Jim Hawaii says that must be Yanzi then because Shay is too retarded to do that. Man, don't do that. <laughs> he says, Hi, Yanzi. Um, Carbon Heart says, If the Jack show uh, is gone, CG will lose a lot of viewers, to be honest. It is, it is one of our major shows. Um, and then with Anna, you know, and who she reaches out to, whether you love them or hate them, it's like at least those are different views. So, Maybe not new viewers, but they're different viewers. So here, here's my opinion sometimes about Comics Gate is that sometimes a lot of these shows are trying to attract the same established viewer versus going forth, right? Um, and you could you could kind of see it with like in a way with channel growth. Like I think John has been where he's at for freaking years now. Uh, Ethan, he's been at, you know, he's been at his numbers for a hot minute. Like, no one's growing. Bancroft is, but he's doing other shit. Um, as far, like, he's he's the one that's kind of maximized YouTube the best. And he has, he has more subscribers than, you know, Malin, Shane, Mandy, I think Mandy. Because he, he has 20,000. Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy, that freaking 
Yeah, he has twenty thousand. I I looked down one day. I was like, "Good on you, shit. Bancroft. Good I on was you. Like, get it, Bogan." But like, he's trying to at least get a new viewer to hopefully become a new comic book reader. And I think a lot of shows, to include this one, I'll be honest. Like, I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to be somebody's first first foray in the comics gate. I don't think that's just what this show is for. I think you need to either. You have to be aware of the scene, and I know it even love it or hate it. And I know the people who hate the scene watch this show because I know y'all be writing fucking dossiers down in Kiwi Farms or freaking Strawberry Farms, freaking Blueberry Farms, Guava Farms, whatever fucking farm. Yeah, Huckleberry Farms. You know, you guys have written more than one dossier on this damn show. But yeah, we have to, and, and that's why I kind of respect what Shane was trying to do with C2E2 about like, hey, trying to get in front of like comic book readers. We're just going to have to agree on, on disagree with like what show he got, but he picked. But like, so I never hated that, that aspect of C2E2, like, hey, I'm trying to get in front of new comic readers who are not aware of what I'm doing and are possibly fans of mine. Um, so there's that. Let me get up. So Snuggy says Cecil was 100% right and shouldn't have uh walked it back. No, he was right. Snuggy, Snuggy's been combative <laughs> and not and not about politics. You're still you're still not muted. Mike DV Dub says Cecil was too full of himself. It was a bad take, and his ego got carried away, and the alcohol didn't didn't help. Uh, Malin deletes his Rumble streams. They're only available live. Okay, so based off what the people who said, you know, who watched it live, you know, RIP to Jack show, but we'll see. We'll see. Carbon Heart says Cecil uh, was completely off here. He was sucking up to FTN so he could stay friends with them. You should be able to tell your friends the truth. Uh as if the demise of the Jack show would be a big loss. It actually would. It would. I mean, Amanda already said it. A lot of people here in this show don't like that show. However, that is, for better or for worse, that is a uh, pillar of the comic state community. So if it is gone, like, that is a loss. Were you trying to say something, uh, Stip? Well, oh. It's kind of off topic of this, but in some ways it is on topic. Is one thing that occurred to me last last like two weeks, maybe a month, is I noticed that Anna has that like gunmetal gray YouTube plaque thing that she has behind her in her studio. I know that's some type of award that that YouTube awards to creators that. I don't know how many subs or how many views or whatever the hell it is. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's debatable, severely debatable, whether Anna is Comicsgate. Okay. Is there another creator within the Comicsgate circle that has one of those placards? No. Okay. I answer you right now. Like, well, it, no, it, but that says more about where. He sits at it as a community, so I'm looking at one of those where it's like, okay, do you realize all this infight is basically shooting yourselves even more in the foot? Yeah, so like, granted, it's not the only because I saw Shane's comment towards the bottom. Uh, it's not the only metric, right? Because, but basically, what it is is potential. It's opportunity, mm -hmm. right? It's it's an opportunity uh, to sell. Um. But yeah, like if you look at like who is CG, Ethan's the only one. With, and it's so for YouTube, for those of you who care, which I know it's not a lot of you, you get a silver, a silver button plaque when you get 100,000 subscribers. You get a gold button plaque when you get 1 million subscribers. So I don't, I think Neurotic is probably the closest in Phantom Menace. Because I don't think geeks and gamers and correct me, I haven't looked Didn't at their he stuff. He just post a plaque recently, in the last couple of weeks. I think I saw. I don't know. Well, I mean, the the last time I looked at him was a couple months ago, and he was at like nine nine hundred k. 
So like somebody you, over there posted a plaque yeah. recently. I remember seeing it in Twitter. So if it if it's a gold button, then he has one million subs, and that's like when people actually start making money. Yeah. Like su- sustain, like you're you're not gonna sustain yourself on YouTube if you don't have a million views. Just purely being on a YouTuber, like, or do people have good careers? Probably living, probably living pretty well without a million. You know, yeah, because like a lot of our top echelon guys, this is what they do, mm-hmm. right? And they're at, they're able to have a nice living. They're not probably like middle class, upper middle class. But they're not like even Ethan, like, oh, I'm a millionaire. I'm like, you're probably fucking not, bro. <laughs> well, well, the so I define millionaire as one million dollars of, of assets. He probably does have one million dollars of assets, but does he grow some million dollars? Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. Cause we could see what he, you know, we could get an idea. But I don't I don't like doing that because I don't like counting people's money because I don't want people to count my money because Y'all fuckers could actually count my money, do a FOIA fucking request, and count my, my entire uh, workplace's money. So Snuggy says, why should C- uh, game get griffs and gamers? <laughs> I'm sorry, geeks and gamers, uh, Friday night tights, etc. Give a fuck about CGTM. I mean, there it is. Uh, Hawaii's Hawaii, Jim Hawaii says, I think both points are correct. While Friday night tights may not have any love for CG, fair rather reporting on uh, what's cultural, uh, cultural news is weak sauce. They only talk about it when Anna, uh, Anna canceled when it was Anna canceled because they're still cool. With, they actually give a fuck about Anna. Mm-hmm. There it is. Um, and I, I mean, watched her. Uh, she did a, stream i don't normally watch in a stream but i am subscribed she did a stream yesterday that where they were talking about what happened on the jack so uh, she was talking about i believe the, what i saw she was only solo um okay. i didn't watch it all and it was actually uh it was a good insight to anna i thought it was a really good stream okay so i'll keep that one in mind so carbon heart says john points oh uh, John's point was completely valid. Friday Night Tights and these YouTubers' entire career based off of criticizing wokeness and getting uh, and them getting canceled, uh, and them getting canceled. Anything that is not woke, but won't speak up when uh, CG is banned. Well, wait a second. Of course, they're not going to talk about CG because CG shit all over them. Uh, and again, like they they don't give a fuck. Like. Here's the thing. It's, you know, it's that saying, and I've talked about this before, and it's from like Jordan, like the analysis is from Jordan Peterson. It's not how you win or lose. It's how you play the game. Right. Because at the end of the day, if people don't want to play with you and when you need assistance, you find out that there's nowhere, no one to assist you. So we, we, Unfortunately, that's how the perception of Comic Skate is. Like, we're friends with people, but then we shit on them. And then magically one day they're going to be like, assist me and fuck that shit. Which I understand. I understand the other point of, hey, I thought you guys were about not be- being anti counter culture and it just happened to me. I thought you were against this. Where's your principles? Um, I don't want to say that, holding that one back. And that's fair. But the thing is, with my opinion on everybody who's on the on that side, on the fandom menace side, they're still fucking fans. They're still trying to fix their favorite property. That's one of the biggest difference about people who are in Comics Gate. I'm not trying to fix Batman anymore. I'm not trying to fix Superman. I'm not trying to fix any of those, any of those. IP or IP holders, I want to support people who are actually trying to compete with them in the fair market. Like that, that is what I, oh, and I'll speak for me only. That's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm here to support the little guy trying to compete with all these conglomerates in the free market. That's what, but they still give a fuck. They complain because they, they are really genuinely trying to fix that shit. So they might they they may not like it, but they may not be like they may not be in it for the same reasons that we're in it. 
does that make sense, Stippling? Yes. Yeah, like I don't yeah. think they're they're in it for the same reasons that we're in it. No, no, I mean, no, they let's put it this way. I mean, you're right in the fact that they 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 hold the course. This is what we're about, and they've maintained it. Whereas, like, like you said on numerous occasions, I was like, when you look at what the de- definition of CG is from 2020 through 2024 versus the definition of a backer or a customer or a fan, how it keeps changing. And it's one of those where it's like, yeah, they hold the course. They, they're, they're essentially, I hate using this word because I fucking hate it, their mission statement has maintained the same from 2020 to 2024. Whereas us, it's all over the goddamn place. All right. So another thing that's all over the goddamn place is this year chat. And I do need to catch up. So, <laughs> so shh for real quick. So Carbon Hart says he wasn't begging for help. He was putting out the hypocrisy. Cecil just wants to be friends with anyone and it's not working anymore. Uh, Jim Hawaii says, I get the feeling Jack will continue, but it'll be Cecil, Anna, and probably whoever they invite. So it's the Cecil and Anna show. Yeah. They 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 have good chemistry together. It'll be fun. Yeah. DJ says, spoiler alert, if you tell fandoms and crossover customers to F off, they will come to your defense. Behaving just like Disney at that at that point. Angela Curry says, Cecil said it was messed up that uh, Friday Night Tight didn't support John. However, he shouldn't be surprised. Both are right. Did John support Az when he had his gaming rant? Did we support Jeremy when his site was attacked? No, because we don't give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, Carbon Heart says, he's so calling John feminine and a pussy was a bad move. I don't see him criticizing Gary or FTN at all. Bad move as a friend. Fair enough. B-Spin says, but Malin is a pussy and a crybaby. Oh, God, is he ever. B-Spin, if I get a fucking somebody slot... I'm just saying, it, creators, if anybody slides into my DMs, you better cover yourself in butter. Unless, unless you're Philip, because Philip, you don't need you don't need no butter, baby. I got some here. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I got I got some here, darling. You don't need no butter. But everybody else, you better cover yourself with fucking butter. All I can say is at least And I and I will open up the DMs if you're an asshole. I don't give a fuck. Hey, all I can say is if that is that clip. That we just watched where Cecil calls out Mail and Malin. Oh my gosh, it for once it wasn't K Fab, he was butthurt. And that's yeah. one of those where it's like, hey, he can he loves to dish it out. Oh, we're the work is it's just K Fab. It's, it's just K Fab guys. No, fuck you, Malin. You got what you deserve. Fuck off. Yeah, but if I had one of we're gonna look at the other side. If I had one of you guys start I don't know. Calling me out on something that I don't think I did wrong. I think I would be very offended uh, with we're more with you guys. We would, we would no, 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 no. That, no, no. That's that's we no. I believe that if there's an issue, we would address it back room first before we'll and then resolve it back room before we'd allow it to get on stream. Whereas these guys, possibly yes, but it was that. it wasn't back stream. In back room, whatever it was, front and center. There was alcohol. I think it definitely lowered some filters, you know. So there was probably some real feelings, but it was probably a little elaborated with how it was presented, which it sounds like, you know, Cecil is taken, uh, whatever you want to call that. But you know, I, Karen, I am a girl. I, my emotions do come more to the front probably than they should. But I, I would have a similar reaction. Let me catch up with the chat. People are saying some good, good stuff towards the bottom. I'm gonna get down there. If you set up a business in town and crap over uh, other vendors and supply and suppliers, people will stop doing business with you. Yep. Shane lets us know that he got two other shows this year. Well, hopefully they're obviously they're probably not gonna be read pop, but hopefully they're good. Uh, <laughs> Subs and what sh- uh, what shows up in live streams are two different things. That is true, because okay. I'm not sub to Ethan anymore, and I pop in every now and then. Uh, Ray says Kiwi Farms is weird. Even I am down there. Yeah, like I said, two dossiers that I know of. And chat, don't go down there and be like, oh Vanessa, there's another one. Like I, I rather not know. 
Let them let them do their reporting. Puzzle gate. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, let the you they should do a puzzle gate. Like, why are there no more puzzles? There are puzzle people over here in Comics Gate. Von Stugel says Ethan is carrying mail in. John preaches but doesn't walk the walk. It, are you saying that Ethan is like John Malin's Jesus? You know, Vaughn, that thing where it's like I was on a beach and there's two f- f- sets of footprints, and then magically there's only one. And I was like, God, where were you? And he was like, I was carrying you. You know that that thing? It's a poem. I think I, it's called I, Footprints. I'm thinking more along the lines of uh, of uh, the fossilized footprints. And then you realize that there was a child's footprint within the adult's footprint because the little child was walking in their father's in their father's footsteps. Oh, it's so sweet. Okay. Get that in the house. All right, so let's see here. Uh, Mike TV Dub, Bancroft's truly an ambassador of CG. Well earned. Yep. Lord Crackhead is growing fast. Yeah, he, I think, 15? I think he's at 15. I think that he just celebrated that a couple weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. And the Dragon Show season two is coming. He's about to do freaking Game Busters. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so Henry Bemis says most people who watch a Jack show aren't, uh, are not comic buyers, even if. Even fewer are comic readers. That's a that was a previous topic. Merch is merch. Yeah. I got I just got the I just got cash grab to support you. You don't need to give me the comic. Um, some people are actually offended that they got a comic. They're like, what the fuck is this? It's called cash grab. How dare you? Kiwi Farm says I was a female and used uh and a used up adult actress. That made me laugh because I'm a dude and I'm just a guy in the chat. That made my day. Don't forget King of the Slums. King? Oh, there's king, kings in them damn slums? Yeah, KSS we're, is the king we're, of slums. We're telling, turning this whole fandom into a fiefdom. It's ridiculous. <laughs> we're mer- Listen, we're all about the mock We're American. We, we shook off fucking kings and shit. Um, I was almost gonna get into a weird rant. I stopped myself. Be proud of be proud, Amanda. <laughs> DJ says uh, Anna was well established. Yep. And <laughs> Anna was well established before CG Associations. Now she's paying a price for her associations. Well, I mean, people make choices. Choices have consequences. I'm I'm free speech, but there is consequences to that shit. Yeah, uh, Anna's a big girl. Watch that stream from yesterday. Well, plus also when that thing first started, where Cecil was going off. I've seen that before. So this time when I watched it, I was focused just on Anna. Mm-hmm. And you could tell she like it starts up and all of a sudden you hear it go, oh my God. And she slaps her hands up on her head. And before that whole that clip was done, she had uh turned on her avatar. So she knew she knew that that was not good. Well, I uh when I watched it. In the Jack show, like she was trying to like keep the peace. I thought she handled it well. Um, watching the recording. So KSSS says, I'm officially king of the slums. It was agreed upon it was agreed upon long ago by Dark Grift, Well Red, and Kelsey. Oh, you got Kelsey Shannon to sign off on you? King <laughs> King of the Slums. All hail the King of the Slums. Hold on, where the hell is that? Vanessa is never gonna get down here. I made it. Together we, <laughs> together we made it. Something, something, something. Uh, Eric says Vanessa's more better butter. It's like butter, but more better. See, that's why, that's why you're my boy. Vanessa's about to go full less tango in Paris. I obviously need to go look that shit up. Hold on. Let me go get that over here in a in a tab. You can last tango in Paris. Last tango in Paris. Is is the tango supposed to be like military tango? Who in the fuck is this? Wait. Last tango in Paris. Look at the Wikipedia. Marlon Brando. Okay. Last tango in Paris. Uh, is a 1972 erotic drama film. Okay. <laughs> Directed by Bernardo Berticelli. Berto Lucy. Sure. 
Michael Dietsche says Last Tango has a butter scene. Oh, it has a butter scene? You feel the animals? Okay. Oh, geez. Don't tell me that's a must. Don't tell me that's our next homework assignment is watching that. No, no, I'm, I'm not watching. Well, just, I mean, I'm not monetized, so I don't give a shit, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> uh, I recognize the argument was drunk arguing very well. Snuggy says it was womanly behavior. Let's go see. I don't appreciate Vaughn agreeing with the criticism of Malin. You are as soy as they come, Vaughn. Dang, Carver. I don't give a flying fuck. You can come over. You're more than welcome to talk to me face to face about it. Dang. So Peter Seven says both Cecil and John were right about some things and incorrect about other things. It seems a bit extreme to uh, the quit the Jack show, though, in my opinion. Well, like I said, we'll see. Because, you know, who knows? Um, who knows what's going to happen between now and Thursday? I think that'll be a good indication on Thursday. Um, we got some arguing in the chat. Michael says, horseshit, Ethan is a coward next to John's first over the wall in the fact. A hundred, a hundred. All right. Michael DJ says, I could tell you that in Fortune 500, if you make malicious public remarks, even against your competitors, you're immediately displaced and blackballed from the industry. Hate mongery is a business. All right. Let's see. All right. I think Beast the chat needs to uh, reel it in just a little bit, please. Well, I, I'm I'm ignoring those. Like I said, no mutual combat in the chat. I just ignore you guys until you cal calm down. Eventually, these types always eventually eat their own. Uh, let's see here. Sister Ronan says, according to the farms, you're the queen of the slums. KSSS, all hail the queen. It's a stampede! KSSS says, last tangle uh, has a sort of prostate exam, too. Gentlemen, we haven't talked about this in a while. Please check your prostate. Because, you know, prostate cancer is, I think, the number seven or eight killer of men. You don't want that in your life. Your PP won't work right anymore. We don't want that. So just go get what you're of, of a certain age. Make sure you check your prostate. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Richard, uh, Richie Dupe says, are they jealous of Cecil because he turned up and made a pile of cash? I don't know. I do not know. Uh, let's see here. They're arguing. Here we go. Now, when I hear see Marlon Brando, I think of Richard Pryor, then I get sad. Uh, let's see here. Eric DeGuapo says, Jav, CG Spreadsheets is a path to the uh, dark side. Join us. Join us. <laughs> Angela Curry says, Vaughn is in Alaska. Good luck. <laughs> I mean, that's a weird place in Alaska. Does Alaska have good chocolate? I have no idea. Probably not. Okay. All right. So that's that one. I know, like I said, official take. I hope Jack. I hope Jack's show's not done. I hope they continue to do that. Um, but we will see. So that's a. So that's another C two E two. The gift that keeps on giving. Um, episode of. Oh, I have a question, and lives. maybe those in the chat know. So, not watching the Jack show. I'm assuming there must have been some sort of updates about C two E two, and next week since it's next week is everybody still going even though they're not going to the con like i know there was talk that like malin was gonna go to at least hang out with the fans that were planning to go and shane was planning to go and but i think cecil pulled back and anna pulled back do we know exactly who is still planning to go and are people still planning to go well i think probably i mean philip was there last year diaz so right. I'm well, still... he'll be going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's his home. That's that's in his hometown. So I wouldn't be surprised. That was Joe Sontag. I don't know if he's going to be there or not. Yeah, I'm not sure if Winkler's going to be there or not. Um. But yeah, like, well, I know. I know Ethan's going, and don't say Is I he never still going. Yes, the last okay. time I saw, he was still going. 
chat, never say I didn't support Ethan because we're not going on hiatus next week. So, so the so the the wraith, the wrath of hiatus will not be out, out just, you know, out in the atmosphere. That thing is in a box. We will have a show next weekend. So whatever happens to him, ain't my fault. Ain't my fault. KSSS says, Noah's here. Show some respect, people. Are they, they still fighting? Yes. All right. So, Andrew Curry says, I think Malian's even... Um, uh, no, I'm it, pretty sure uh, they yeah, told him that when they rejected his tickets. But I didn't... I was thinking that they were... Because they still had flights. They still had hotels. So, I was yeah. thinking they were still planning a meetup of some sort. Unless they just said, F it. It's really not worth it. Well, I mean, I... I don't well the way it's sounding like from what I heard is that at least Ethan is going. I think John is still going. Like there's enough stuff to do in Chicago. Like I mean it's kind of bummer, especially if you get too close to a vet, like if you didn't pay for like to have refundable tickets, you know, the hotel rooms. So there it is, there be. So maybe they'll network. Who knows? Who knows what they'll do? I and again, I sincerely hope that if they if those three do go, that they have a good time, that the fans who still have tickets and want to still go to C2E2, I hope you guys have a good time too. I'm I am on the same feelings as Tampa that if you went, you had a good time. And we'll find out. And I guess for the next two <laughs> this is this is gonna be a long episode of Comic Skate Days of Our Lives because like it started like what like a, a month ago like they pulled our shit like it, it started well i mean according to them it started last april last august or whatever but this has been a long episode of days of our lives c2e2 edition uh but i mean we're we're still doing raise hell praise dale so like that's gonna be a long low episode too of things that <laughs> richie dupe with. says there'll be a rest let's hope brian blue thunder is attending uh, well, I hope not, because again, my opinion is if that happens, there that is going to be used to make comics gate make all of us, all seventy of us, look like a bunch of psychos. So I hope that doesn't happen. I hope that doesn't happen. All right, you could go in, uh, go in the galloping ghost. I don't know what that is. Chris, what? Uh, wait, 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 wait. What? What? Galloping ghosts. You don't know what that is. Am I supposed to know what it is? You should definitely know what that is. Based off what? Your fascination for filled with two L's. Oh, is that his workplace? Yeah. Okay. I never knew what it was called. Apologize to Philip now. Uh, Philip, shut up, Amanda. Philip, I'm sorry that I didn't know the name of your arcade. I would have never guessed. The Galloping Ghost. You're still my favorite Philip with two L's. So get over here. I got some butter. <laughs> I, I I got some Irish straight from Ireland butter. No salt. It's it's nothing but cow cow milk. From yeah, half- Vanessa, I had a milk. Shut up. Drink. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> for, it's it comes from happy Irish cows. So I got the butter, baby. Get over here. I didn't know his place was called a galloping ghost. I didn't know. I didn't know. Man is like, how dare you? Holy shit. I was kind of hoping you said a show from the 80s because, you know, I do have that. I wasn't here. I wasn't in America. Born in 82. I don't remember the first four years of my life. And I was definitely not in America for the next four. That covers me for the entire 80s. God damn it. I almost killed Vaughn and not on purpose. Let's see here. You do everybody's your best. Like, you do your absolute best. Everybody's like, it's the arcade. Old Dirty Fatty says, I'm going to Motor City Comic Con, so I'm assuming that's Detroit. If anybody else... uh, So, Old Dirty Fatty is going to Motor City Comic Con. If you're going, go find each other. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Do 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 boo 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 boo. I should get the bird to make one of those for me. 
Uh, <laughs> Zayn was like, shh. Vanessa's a fake Phil fan. Not a fake Phil fan. Everybody's like, it's where it works. Jim Hawaii says, Vanessa left Phil down. Unbelievable. She broke his heart. She's a fake fan girl. <laughs> so does that mean I have to put my butter back? <laughs> Did I put my butter back, Phil? MTN, I I'm not sure if you're old enough to make this comment, but I'm going to go ahead and read it because you are indeed an adult. Vanessa must be nagging Philip by pretending that she didn't know his arcade, uh, his arcade was called the Galloping Ghost. I do not recall ever hearing the name of his workplace. KSSS says, Vanessa, your prostate check warning uh, to keep my diggling working inspired uh, inspired me. I checked. It's all good. I oiled. My oil levels is good. My stick shift is working. <laughs> it's Vanessa. And, you know, the, just as a reminder from Travco, we really do need to talk about juvenile diabetes. We shouldn't be letting kids eat the cake that Amanda's daughter made. It's not good for them. It's not good for them. V don't lie. It's country crock. No, it's it's what well, carry gold. I got that good Irish butter. Uh, Jolly Grease says we need to discuss the Noah issue. Noah's grown, allegedly. I mean, I never seen his driver's license, so it's so there it is. Uh, Assistant Rona says the cream has gone sour. Not my cream. I don't know about your cream, but my cream has it. So there, there you go. Shane is Shane is going. So like I said, I hope those three gentlemen have a good time. That at least the fellowship is good with them. That they're able to hang out with the people who nope, are interested in time. them. Yeah, that everybody has a good time. That you had that casserole that they call pizza. Um, in that city. Look at look at look at Phil Shane. We have that Godzilla pinball machine. If you want to play it, first balls on me. First balls on me. <laughs> Vanessa's dreaming. There you go. Halder says she Sheer Davis, fearless reader of all CG. Uh, Sheer is he Sheer? He see through like like a what you call it pantyhose. Sheer Davis. Fearless reader of all CG comic peepos. A real Dill Argist who knows the business. The business. Get down. Please tell me you know that, Lore. What, the business? Cheer Davis. No. Dude, I have to go to sleep. I have not been catching Shane as I, as I once did. Uh, I'll, I'll admit to that. That Vanessa is upsetting me today. I know, just I'm just all sorts of just disappointing Amanda. I have to go. I got work in the morning. I need to go to bed. Uh, I'm sleep deprived. Chat. I discovered that about myself. Like probably all of you. I really do need to. I really need to have that George, that George T, freaking bedtime. Because I wake up like when he wakes up. Uh, Henry Bemis says Chicago pizza if it's filled with donuts. With dough and lies. It's a casserole. B Spin says Shane's like balls. Hmm. Oh, okay. Sheer is what Ritsu, uh, what Sheer is what, oh, instead of because he's Japanese, Grease. I'm not doing that last name, it's not coming to me. Shut, I could do it. Shushi, sure. Tushi. Not, not, it's not Tucci. That would be hilarious. Ruiz Tucci. Like, let me go meet you to my, my half Mexican, half, half Italian cousin, Ruiz Tucci. Says, says Billy Too. Sheer is what he calls. So close enough. Michael DJ says, somebody needs to clip Vanessa's butter and prostate audio and do a voiceover for the last tango's big scene. Oh, God. Vanessa used, uh, used to remind us to wash our balls. Well, I mean, you, you need to wash your hands and your balls. Uh, Amanda is Cecil is the Cecil to V's mail in tonight. Oh, my God. No. No. Actually, before we go. You're acting like a pussy, Vanessa. Well, I mean, I have one, so it's, it's allowed. Allowed. It's allowed. 
I mean, what what can I say? It's allowed. I mean, I don't think all of you would accept that, but it's allowed. <laughs> um, I mean, I got this poo tag for some reason. I mean, let me get, get something out of it. Shit. <laughs> we don't need a deep dive there, Vanessa. <laughs> I haven't been deep diving on in a while, Amanda. Let me tell you something. Oh dear, it's been, a, it's, been, it's been a dry, it's been a dry spell, a very long dry spell. It's the Sahara Desert, from sea to shining sea, it's nothing but, but the Sahara. We're trying to expand. We're going south. We're desertifying everything about freaking Africa about to have no, no damn freaking jungles. Well, my dry spell. <laughs> oh, oh, everybody's laughing. Tentacle lady, how dare you? Eric Guapo says gross. That makes Vaughn at it tonight? I hope not. I hope not. No, I'd never be able to pull off what Anna does on a weekly basis. Uh, Go over. Vanessa is a fem cell confirmed. I'm not, you know. Because here's the thing. I'm also not a hoe. So it's like, you know, it, it's 2024 is a weird time to be single. I'll just say that as it is. And then when you actually follow your religious precepts and they say, hey, you don't bang before you're married and you actually follow that shit. Yeah, you you know, you get like, but then you remember you when you were a 19 and you were a heathen in the Marine Corps, which is the man buffet. God damn it. I was a heathen. I mean, I wasn't the best heathen in the world chat. Like I, I was I was a C student, CB student in, in high school. That's about the level of heathen I was like. A little, a little bit of a heathen, but not like socially unacceptable, you know. I wasn't getting trains or shit ran on me. That's gross. Although I know, I know people who have. So this bingo card, we may be tracking this uh, for the rest of the year. I need to make it small to get the whole bingo card. So this is courtesy of Crazy Mad. I will say just off the bat, this O, I am. I'm gonna remove this. From from my bingo card because you had a pocket for that one. They're married, like no. Um, so so I mean, does does I is that filled in? I think the uh, the card was done after Thursday night. Yeah. So we we won't count Thursday night. So like I'm definitely looking at this. I'm gonna remove that because, like I said, that's out of pocket. They're married. We should we shouldn't be like, oh yeah, wouldn't that be funny if Whitney leaves PTP? No, anytime a marriage ends, that's fucking sad. So that's out of pocket. I, okay, I, that's very valid. Very valid. Yeah. Uh, Narwhal wins an Eisner. That'd be hilarious. And it gets pregnant. That's in the realm of possibilities. I was gonna say the. I was gonna say the the those two. Right there, Anna and Narwhal. Those are the two I, I definitely see happening this year. I mean, I, other than that, I can see every single week, uh, Vanessa, I can see you bringing this up, going, Well, that's not on the bingo card. And you're going to say it in just the right way that I'm going to lose it each time. You mean the same way I said that was in my on my bingo card when I was talking about jury duty? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I remember so, that. That's I remember what you said at that time. I started lo losing it. Yeah, so we're we're gonna we're gonna keep this and we're judging this for the rest of the year. He says it's the official bingo card for CG. So as the chat, we are gonna monitor this this bingo card. I may have to make my own edited version and like put this as a. We may have to come up with something. Maybe Snucky apologizes to every uh, every to CGTM. Maybe that'll be the one. Oh, 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 oh. Someone needs to crowdfund a bingo dopper. A, 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 a crowdfund a comics gate bingo dopper for this. Oh there. my goodness. And you... Oh my goodness. Or merchandise, 
Come on now. Hey, 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 there you go. Keep the dollars flowing. Keep the dollars flowing. Keep them dollars flowing. Endless, All right. Endless circle. All right. So real quick, we're not voting today for sandwiches, but let's just see who who put their sandwiches out there to be judged this week. Hold on. I, Amanda made this. She even get got what the heck are these called again? I forget. Capers. Capers. There they are. So Amanda made a lox bagel. That does look delicious. And it's yeah. actually an animal she'll eat. I'm talking about I don't eat beef. Okay, and that was this week. So only Amanda. Who are you, Snuggy? Oh, <laughs> dang. Only Amanda has put out a sandwich. So remember, next week we're voting on sandwiches. So if you have a sandwich, please, for the love of God, take a picture of it, especially if it was made by your lady. Take a picture of it. Put it on. X going to give it to you. Please use the hashtag Sandwich Saturday, which is Sandwich, not Sandwich. So S-A-M-M-I-C-H Saturday. We'll look it up. We, we'll make a poll. You're going to vote for it. We're going to judge each other. And the winner will then 1v1. Did Snugglist won with this one, didn't he? Thank yes. You. So whoever wins next week, we do two polls next week, and the winner, 1v1's Snuggy Sandwich. And that'll be for the month of April. All right? So that's our show, ladies and gentlemen. We went over. My God. Baz Lox is just smoked salmon. Yes, smoked salmon. All right. So moderators, please put any links of sh comic skate shows that are happening right now or that will be happening in the next couple hours. Chat, it's been fun. Um, hope to see you next week. Hope we get good news from C2E2 and no one gets arrested. Um, and that's it. I need to go pick out. We're going to make do the week great. Let's make the week great. And you know what? Just because I like this video, we'll see you guys next week on the chat. Bye, everyone. Bye.